And on the off chance that there are people who are formerly a part of CPI who end up watching this, what happened to you, all of this is miserable shit, okay? Properly miserable. And I hope you understand there is a relationship between the ideology of the CPI and the way in which it was used as a cult. There is a connection there. I can't, I'm not going to spend like, you know, five hours on a whole debunk spree on whatever, but I strongly encourage you to be more critical of dogmatism and in-group, out-group tribalism. So, for those of you who don't know, agent of the Kremlin and famed philosopher, Mr. Borger, C.M. Kang. Hmm. Borger King. Recently had a, a, a bit of, a, a bit of a egg hurled at his face at a pro, a, you know, approximately Mach 3. Uh, egg in the form of an enormous medium article. I know. 57 minute read. See, Malpin has uh, styled himself as a kind of, um, you know, sure, I work for RT and therefore the Russian government, but I'm also independently creating, uh, uh, you know, a grassroots communist movement uh, here in the West. We have powerful messages we want to disseminate to the world, such as Chinese billionaires are what Marx would have wanted. And also, socialism is when the Donbass gets invaded by Russia. You know, wisdom like that. Uh, however, Maupin, uh, pictured here in the snazziest fedora, uh, Maupin uh, seems to uh, seems to have gotten himself in a little bit of trouble. Caleb Maupin's former comrades speak out. His abuses must stop. That is right. The fractured elements of the CPI have come together to uh, 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 lay blame at the foot of Caleb Maupin. I have not spoiled myself on the contents of this. I saw some Twitch streams the other day going over it, and uh, I ignored them. I turned away. I do not spoil myself. I do not pre-watch. You see, I experienced this with you. I don't normally go over this stuff with this much vindictive glee, but Caleb Maupin is special for a number of reasons. First of all, this is clearly hurting him because he immediately deleted his Twitter account. Second of all, he's already hurting because he got dropped by RT when RT America uh, packed up shop and closed when, uh, I think it was, what was the hosting program? Was it C-SPAN? No, no, not C-SPAN. Um, uh, uh, RT America was dropped by local television providers, which sort of cut off their, uh, propaganda apparatus in the West. And Maupin got dropped as well. Um, was it, I was DirecTV. I think it was DirecTV. Uh, yeah, so that's good. So, so he lost some income there. You know, there's been constant turmoil and infighting within these, like, fake lefty, like, red fascist type groups um, online. It's always fun to see, and I like fanning the flames a bit, but Maupin holds a special place in my heart for being the most shamelessly dishonest propagandist to not even have the charisma to justify it, okay? The Grey Zone boys, do they lie 24-7? Yes, they do. But, you know, Aaron Mate, Max Blumenthal, reasonably smart, charismatic people. Caleb is not. His, his, he, he looks like a Muppet, he has an obnoxious nasally voice. He's insufferable. He's unconvincing. He he's a he's a lull cow. I mean, he he's he's phenomenal. He's he's just ripe for for mockery. And uh, he also gets really flustered really easily. So all of this put together, I mean, it really 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 enhances my enjoyment of this. We have a a medium article with a goddamn table of contents to begin with. All right, folks. You better, you better buckle in, okay? Because we ain't reading the cliff notes. Medium has a TTS function, is that true? Caleb Maupin's former comrades speak out. His abuses must stop. Contents. 1. Summary and information for the reader. 2. Caleb Maupin's sexual misconduct. That actually doesn't sound too bad, I don't think. In my opinion. Summary and information for the reader. Let's go! Bringing forward this statement was not easy for any of us, but there was no alternative to speaking the truth. It's our responsibility to stop abuse of power against comrades. Those of us who want to fight for the ideas of constructive, optimistic socialism and anti-imperialism and who have contributed to the Organization Center of Political Innovation have been betrayed by Caleb Maupin. So the Center of Political Innovation is the, um, yeah, here. Center of Political Innovation. 
the Center of Political Innovation, here we go, the um, CPIUSA.org, uh, which just, just sounds a little bit off from the CPUSA.org, which is the organization they're kind of trying to beef with here, and uh, four-point plan to rescue the country. Great. These were the incredible people. These were the, these were the, the heroes who did the, um, who did the tanky conference, did they not? Yes? Yeah, hold on, one last, just so we're fully aware. This is it, right? Whoa, Facebook page. Oh, God. Where is it? Yes! Yes! Not a cult, by the way. We'll get to that. Maupin. Over the years, he has subjected members of CPI to various forms of abuse and exploitation. Whoa! He pushed his sexual desires on members who had considered him to be a leading comrade. Uh oh. He brought his sexual impulses into political organizing. Uh oh. Caleb pushed a member out of CPI and its predecessor, Students and Youth for a New America, after she made clear that she would not do sexual favors for him. Uh oh. Caleb paid a member for sex who he knew was economically desperate and then went on to push them out of the group and slander them. Uh -oh. Caleb Maupin has also targeted people in their teens with manipulative cult tactics in an effort to exploit their labor so that he can build himself up off their hard work and sacrifice, and then would go on to slander them behind their backs if they didn't do exactly what he wanted. The abuses Caleb Maupin committed could have also done tremendous damage to all of us by discrediting all who associated with our political position. That's fine. I'm okay with that. You all participated in the conference. That's okay. Position. Despite these revelations, now is not a time to despair. It's a time to fight even harder for an optimistic socialism and anti imperialism. It's a difficult reality for many to face, but Caleb Maupin's primary concern has not been advancing the cause of anti imperialism. His primary concern has been self gain at the expense of others. However, our goal is not to make an overly simplified picture of Caleb Maupin or to demonize him unjustly. Our statements give credit where it is due, but at the same time, they demonstrate his abusive behavior very clearly. The following statements from CPI members will show in detail how all of this was the case. If you would like to get in contact, or if you have any questions, please direct them to Center for Political Innovation at gmail.com. The two members who were victims of Caleb's sexual misconduct wrote their statements in pseudonyms to protect themselves from any retaliation or harassment. Please respect their privacy. If you have any evidence of Caleb's further abuse, please come forward. Okay, I can't help it. I have to say so. I, 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 I have to read some of this. <clears throat> Part 2. Caleb Maupin's Sexual Misconduct 2A. Member 2's Statement When I first met Caleb, I was 19 years old, living on my own for the first time, and paying my rent with my own paychecks while going to school full-time. I was in a very vulnerable place, socially and financially. At the same time, though, I considered myself to be more mature than my peers because of how independent I was compared to my other political science classmates, and because I was one of the only communists. Oh, no, no, no. When I met him, a prominent YouTuber and accomplished journalist over a decade older than me who treated me like his intellectual equal, oh, oh my fucking god, he made me feel intelligent and important, especially since he would frequently take me out to dinner where we'd discuss our political ambitions and the think tank he wanted me to help him build, the Center for Political Innovation. Groomy behavior? Oh yeah. You're, you're, you're so smart for your age. Beginning in 2019, we'd have dinner together at least once a month, and sometimes during those dinners, he would bring up what I assumed at the time was his academic interest in corporal punishment, especially spanking. It's my highly academic interest in the subject. As time went on, we became closer and closer friends, which led to him confiding in me in 2020 during the beginning of the COVID pandemic that his academic special interest was in fact the sexual one. Really? He even told me he would engage other people in conversations about corporal punishment and spanking because it turned him on to do so. When we became closer friends in 2021, he finally admitted to me that he would masturbate to the thought of roping unsuspecting people, especially women, into these conversations about their experiences with being spanked and other forms of sexual or of, uh, of physical abuse. Burger King. I tend to be a very open, 
and sexually liberal person, so I don't really mind when my friends discuss their sex lives with me in a platonic way. As a matter of fact, I was honored that Caleb supposedly trusted me enough that he was willing to share that part of his life with me. Oh no. Oh no, the red flags. They don't mind the red flags because they think it's communism. They're like, oh, communist flags. However, I was still under the impression that he was interested in me as a platonic friend and comrade, nothing else. Which is why I continue to participate in CPI's conferences and events, including facilitating CPI's California conference for him in September 2021, which entailed Caleb and I traveling together and sharing a hotel room and transportation. Uh, uh. Back then, I was working for a math tutoring company. Caleb knew that this job was incredibly important to me and that I needed the income to pay off my student loans and other financial expenses. I only agreed to go to California with Caleb under the condition that I would be able to work on the Monday we left because I'd already been assigned that shift that day. When I first asked him, he told me that it wouldn't be an issue because the conference was from Friday to Sunday so that Monday I could work after we checked out of the hotel. Nevertheless, when Monday rolled around, he insisted that we he wanted to have lunch at a Mexican restaurant before we left and refused to get me a separate Uber to get to the airport early to work. Since I couldn't complete my shift in the restaurant, I ended up missing it and losing my job as a result. Jesus. Even though I told him this is exactly what would happen and explained to him the many reasons why I couldn't afford to lose my job, when I did get fired, Caleb insisted that I will be okay and that we, himself and CPI, will not abandon you. Okay, right, so Caleb wanted her to lose the job so that she would be more dependent on him. Little did I know that when Caleb reassured me he'd help me find another job, he didn't necessarily mean another tutoring gig. Oh no. Oh my god, we have receipts. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm guessing right side is the girl and yep, C is Caleb. Remember on Monday when I said that missing my shift might cost me my job? I was unfortunately correct. I'll call you tonight when I get home. Okay, I'm really sorry, Caleb. I'll do my best to find another job. Holy f- the, 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 the consequences of abuse here. She's apologizing to him. Why are you apologizing? You're doing your best. See, even he agrees. I'm really sorry this happened. I'll try to help however I can. You'll be okay. You are safe. How will your dad's credit being affected prevent him from making mortgage payments? He's a, this is a normal convo to have. He's on a mortgage that has some kind of variable rate. Oof. So if his credit goes down, his payments go up. I don't know the exact particulars, but it was one of those predatory mortgages from the early 2000s. Oof. Well, you should talk to him soon. Try not to catastrophize and say one thing necessarily leads to another. You need a new job. That's what we are dealing with. Why do you sound like Everett when you try to imitate Burger King? Oh, no, I don't mean to. Okay, you're right. I just need to step back and breathe. I have BPD and OCD, so catastrophizing tends to be my brain's default mode. Oh, my God. He literally got you to lose your job, and you're like, um, I'm retarded. So, like, I do tend to flip out sometimes. My, it's like, my dad's gonna lose the house, and I lost my job, but... <sighs> I'm kidding. If this is retarded, I'm retarded. Okay, we're all retarded. I'm not ready to talk to my dad yet, though. I can't even stop crying, let alone hold a coherent conversation with the most judgmental person in my life. Keaton assures me is on his way to you right now. It's okay to let your emotions out. This is a big loss. I'm about to go see him. Thank you for helping to comfort me. I really appreciate it. We are your friends. We will not abandon you. That's very reassuring to hear. At least I'm not alone in this. Jesus. Why are you doing a score for us? No, I'm trying to do fucking Caleb's... Okay, whatever. The main conflict between Caleb and I that arose after I lost my job was this. After I'd started living in Jersey City with the John Brown Volunteers in August 2021, so I had to... Okay, hold on. Are these would, would John Brown actually approve of these guys? Or is this, an, is this like the new Black Panther Party? Okay, it's like the new Black Panther Party. Never mind. It's a subset of the CPI USA. It literally links to their website. Also, the first uh, description they have is anti-imperialist. If a leftist calls themselves anti-imperialist before anything else, that means they're pro-Russia. That is, that's literally what it means. I will not qualify the statement. I mean this 100% of the time. This being the first self-descriptor means that they're pro-Russia. Their actual position is Russian nationalism and Syrian nationalism and uh, Chinese. Na yeah, you know, just, yeah. Um, it's 100% of the time it's true. So I'd been paying 200 a week in rent to Caleb to cover the portion of the 600 a week hotel cost. What? 
I'd started living in Jersey City with the John Brown volunteers in August 2021, so I'd been paying $200 a week in rent to Caleb to cover my portion of the $600 a week hotel cost. The hotel in Jersey City, are you, so they're just staying in a hotel? Or the John Brown volunteers are staying in a hotel while they do whatever it is the fuck they're doing? Okay, before I moved in, Caleb had been paying the exact same hotel rate for only Joey and Keaton to live there, but he told me I had to pay a third of the rent when I moved in because he was supposedly paying the rest of all our expenses. Despite this agreement, I was paying the majority of the household expenses for the John Brown volunteers because the only money we received to support ourselves was the half of our canvassing money which kept each day. Most of the time, we'd make about 30 to 100 per day total. Wait, they were canvassing for a cause and they get, got to keep half the money they would raise? <gasps> okay, so what, the other half went to Caleb, I'm guessing? So when I lost my math tutoring job, Caleb still expected me to continue financially supporting the JBV while I also had to continue to pay for my student loans, which meant I desperately needed another source of income. Caleb expected me to spend even more time canvassing for the JPVs after I lost my job, though, because he thought canvassing was a sufficient way to make money for myself and the organization. I could have canvassed less so I could get another job, or he could have stopped asking me to pay that third of the rent since it seemed unnecessary before I started living there, but part of what Caleb wanted was for me to spend less time away from him in CPI, giving basically every spare second I had to be a dutiful member of the group. The day after I lost my job at the math tutoring company, I told Caleb I wanted to try to at least find other part-time work. However, his reaction to that suggestion made it very clear he didn't even see it as an option. He told me I couldn't have one foot in living biologically and one foot in the revolution. What the f*** does that mean? This, was qu this quote, which was part of a much longer lecture he gave about how I needed to devote even more time to our political work if I truly consider myself serious about it. By the way, can I, can I just use this as an additional like note to the ongoing list that has proved the time uh, tested fact that everyone who dislikes me is a monster. Can we just, can we just acknowledge that? That, like, time and time again, disliking me is a phenomenal indicator of, of horrible moral compass? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying it, man. It's like the perfect litmus test. This quote was part of a much longer lecture. Um, it was very hurtful considering I had just given up my job for Caleb and his organization. Yet just treating the CPI as the main aspect of my life wasn't enough for him. Caleb made it clear that if I really cared about him and my other comrades, CPI would have to become my life. Mm -mm. Oh, oh boy. Member two, we should talk later, but basically it all gets down to this. You're in a situation where you know your housing and food will be taken care of. You will not be left out to dry. However, you have some rather unrealistic expectations about other stuff you insist is absolutely needed. Your life is your life. Your decisions are your decisions. But you need to figure out how dedicated you are to communism. <laughs> and if you are ready to leave your old life behind or not. You have one foot in living biologically and one foot in the revolution, and that's a very hard way to live. I can help you and be your friend, but I cannot solve all your problems. I cannot make hard choices for you. Does this get shown more later? No, okay, so I have to read this now. And then, is this from the Bible? 34. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth, for I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his daughter, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Wait, is he... So he's God in this Bible quote, then. The, the reference is that he's Christ. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you that person will certainly not lose their reward. Okay. Yeah, Burger King 316. Bringing the jacket. See you at Wendy's at 1 p.m. Spent a long time thinking about you last night. I know these are very hard times for you. I'm probably overthinking all this. I just care about you a lot. Spent a long time in prayer. <laughs> Talk to you soon. I do understand what you're saying, though with all due respect, I think there are certain issues you've had the privilege of not having to deal with, and those pressures are something I'm more than happy to take care of on my own. The reality of it is that I can't just abandon my family. I don't have the privilege of doing that because I've been their rock for my entire life and they can't do certain things without me. I know it's probably difficult to deal with me having other obligations, but they are obligations, not choices. There are certain things in my life that aren't optional, and I'm sorry that they interfere with my communist activism. 
If I had the option of forgetting them or leaving them behind, trust me, I would. It would certainly make my life a whole lot easier. I'm not asking you to abandon your family. Wait, then what was the point of this Bible quote? Right here. Anyone who loves their mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. Okay. We can talk later. There are some other things I cannot offer you. I understand. We'll talk later. Therefore, I ended up doing sex work so I could make enough to support our household and pay off my debts while still having enough time to canvas full time for the JBVs. Oh, we just kind of leapt into that, didn't we? Jesus. I distinctly remember telling Caleb that it seemed like sex work was my only way out of this delicate financial situation. His response was simply that he respects my decision. In retrospect, it seems the real reason he didn't mind me doing sex work while I was living in CPI's New Jersey housing is because he probably wanted to become one of my clients. For what it's worth, after I left the JBV house, he eventually did become a client of mine. Caleb kicked me out of the John Brown Volunteers in the beginning of November 2021 after I relapsed on heroin. Oh my fucking god, he's going after addicts too. Oh my god, it's like everything. Holy shit. If there's anything people like Caleb Maupin are good at, it's that they have finely tuned internal radars to detect people they can manipulate. That's like the main thing that they're good at. All cult leaders are like that. That's like the main trait leader. Or the main trait of cult leaders. People who are financially desperate, or they have drug problems, or they're super insecure, or literally anything. Oh my god, Caleb Maupin's actually evil. Yeah, I always knew that. However, I will admit that this is a bit more pointed than I expected. This is not a new uh impression that, that i've gotten of him it is however a worsening of the existing impression uh quite quite a bit after i relapsed in heroin late october at that point i took some time away from the org only attended a few smaller events and stayed at my fiance's apartment to focus on my recovery and getting clean again well but wait you have a fiance oh whew, i don't even want to the dynamics here the vibes are not good well by that time i had started my own math tutoring business oh that's really nice and had my own students, I was still doing sex work as a side hustle to supplement my income because I didn't have enough students to cover the revenue I'd lost once I started canvassing entirely and had to pay my own utilities again. Or once I stopped canvassing entirely, my apologies. In December 2021, Caleb asked me to replace his former dominatrix, Miss Lucy. He's a fucking bottom. No wonder. No, he's not. This isn't a bottom. This is a sub. They're not the same thing. He's a fucking sub, which is just like being a bottom. Okay, to be fair, though, all of you should have been able to look at Caleb Maupin and know that he likes being stepped on with high heels. That should not be new information to you. So that means when he was talking about the spanking, he was thinking about himself being spanked, not other people being spanked. Okay. All right. I agreed to do so for 250 a session because I did need the money, and it felt like if I said no, I'd be even more isolated from the rest of CPI than I already was as a result of my relapse. By that time in mid-December, I was clean again, which Caleb insisted upon in order for us to see each other, yet he was still apparently lying to the rest of CPI that I continued to be in the midst of my drug addiction. Jesus Christ. He did this while saying to my face that he didn't want me going to CPI events or his birthday party, so I didn't run into his wife, Mechis? Mechis? I genuinely don't know. Chat? I didn't know he had a wife either. I'm still trying to process. I'm, I'm just trying to catch up. I'm going to go with Mechis. Mechis? Mehes? I'm going to change it every time I say it. Because he thought it would, quote, make things awkward, end quote. I later learned from other CPI members that this was a common tactic of his, isolating someone from the group through rumors and hearsay in order to make sure I didn't interact with other CPI members in case I decided to tell them about our arrangement. Truth be told, I was terribly afraid of anyone else in the org finding out I was doing this with him. I would also be afraid of people finding out I was <laughs> sleeping with Caleb Muffin. I was afraid if I told anyone, they wouldn't believe me, and if he told someone, I'd be shunned and ostracized. I saw Caleb as his dominant a few times in December 2021. He essentially paid me to reenact his childhood corporal punishment as a fatherly figure to discipline him. You, you, know, you know what they say about everything being about sex except for sex and sex is about politics? Oh, God. Included in this arrangement was the understanding that he'd also compensate me for the several hours he spent sexting me about his kink when we weren't seeing each other in person. He texted me so often I eventually had to ask him to stop because I kept getting notification from his sexually explicit messages while I was teaching my students. However, he only paid me for our in-person meetings and never even mentioned billing for my texting labor again despite that first agreement. Trying to shame him for being a horny king. After a couple months of constant communication and a few punishment sessions, he abruptly stopped speaking to me, acting as though I suddenly didn't exist. I was very confused and hurt by this because I truly thought... You, have you guys ever met, like, a victim of abuse or grooming or whatever who feels, like, really bad that the abuser suddenly cut them off and internally you're like, this is the best thing that could ever happen to you? Like, 
Okay, he's he's acting how you don't exist. Holy shit, run with that. Take that and run. <laughs> Just go with that. That's that's the good part. I thought if I, by agreeing to do sex work for him, I'd want his good graces so we could continue to be friends. It's f***ed, man, because I genuinely cannot imagine that Caleb Maupin is that invigorating of a person to be friends with. He's not particularly charismatic. Not to, not to sound shallow, but he's not hot. So, like, what? Okay. I knew he didn't want me in the group afterwards, but I thought at the time that he appreciated my contributions thus far and respected me as a person. So the actual reason that he wanted to keep her out of CPI and the real reason he continued to lie about her being on heroin even after she recouped is that Maupin did not want her to contact other CPI members after doming him. He's probably ashamed of these tendencies, and after um, using her for sex work, the last thing that he wanted was to have her, like uh, her interact. Oh, is this a dude? Oh, okay, dude then, sorry. I thought I read um, uh, her at some point, but okay, he, whatever, it doesn't matter. The last thing Caleb would want would be, um, would, would, would be the person doming him to, like, interact with the, with the, like, cult community that he's working on or working with or whatever. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Think you can hold me accountable for my feelings about that book? Absolutely. We'll moderate your detention assignment. You have to write, I must accept your punishment. I need your discipline to grow and be safe 100 times. I... Cannot believe we are actually seeing the sexts and the sex work in the texts. This is phenomenal. That is what you're going to say to me when I ask, why are you being punished, Caleb? If you get that answer wrong, then you clearly haven't learned that lesson and you'll be punished even more. Thank you, member two. Can you remind me why the boatmaster needed to spank the last duck every day? Oh god, it's not even normal, like, daddy abuse. It's like some kind of weird biblical... Like, allegoric- oh god, oh f dude. You lefties think you're kinky, you furry, trans girl whatevers, okay? You cannot even approximate the kink of a, like, a homosexual Baptist living in the American Midwest who just discovered the internet in their mid-30s. You cannot f***ing fathom the, the depth of, of depravity. To keep himself from getting lost and hurting himself, the one time he decides to avoid his punishment, he is isolated from his family and almost killed. If the boatmaster doesn't spank the duck, the duck will be like a sailboat without a rudder, directionless alone and without... with nowhere to go. Loved. To... Okay, just loved, open quote, the whole last text, end quote. The boatmaster was keeping the duck safe, encouraging them to hurry back, frowny face. That hard spank with the stick was given in love. I'm so sorry for questioning it, member two. I know I need to get punished. You must be very disappointed in me, frowny face. Delay, follow-up text. If you were my teacher, would I get sent for the paddle for this? This is more than I ever could have imagined this would be, by the way. Did you emotionally prepare for this? No. I did no preparation for this at all. I'm so glad I didn't spoil myself. This is insane. We're a third of the way through the document. At most. Ping the duck is the reference? Okay, gotcha. All right, okay. Yes, you would. Not because I'm angry with you, but because like Ping, okay. You still haven't learned why you need an authority to guide you with a firm hand. This is, this is the sexual pathology of the authoritarian, by the way. I am kink shaming. Ugh. Kink shaming is very valid here. You are smart enough to understand these things, so I have very high expectations of you. Those expectations help you become better, and my discipline helps you meet those expectations. Understood? I need to get a spanking for my little attitude problem. You should probably double the lines I need to write, frowny face. You'll be getting double the spankings instead. I'm a proponent of learning while doing. Maybe if you experience Ping's punishment for yourself, you'll lose your attitude. Is it going to hurt to sit down after? Yes, it will. But you still have to sit up straight and deal with the pain. Remember that pain every time you think of questioning my authority. If I see you slouching or changing your posture because you're in pain after I spank you, you'll just get paddled instead. Disrespecting that book is kind of like disrespecting you. I must respect authority and dis- <laughs> Good posture is essential to good health and productivity. Exactly. Disrespecting any form of authority and discipline is disrespecting me, and I am not forgiving or kind when I am disrespected. My dad should have put me over his knee more often. Taught me to not have this disrespectful attitude. You should spank me really hard. Am I going to have to eat soap? Reading this while knowing that Caleb Maupin is undeniably masturbating while typing these out and reading these messages is, um... Oh. Oh. All right, we gotta, gotta... Gotta brace ourselves for these. Unfortunately, I was wrong. 
The reason he stopped speaking to me was because apparently another group member came forward with her own allegations against him and assumed that I was the one who'd leaked it. Ooh. Even though he'd already told the other CPI members I was a drug addict who couldn't participate in group events before this, after member one came forward, he began p telling people I was dangerous and two-faced so that no one would believe the allegations. Of course, from my perspective, I had done everything he'd asked me to do and kept our secret to protect myself, so when he ghosted me suddenly in the middle of January, I felt completely betrayed. And then here are messages between Caleb Mop and another person. She's rather two-faced. Member two? Member two. We flirt texted... Oh, no, it is she. See? I thought I saw she. We flirt texted many times. Always consensual. <laughs> Very normal, immediate thing. Not like, oh, yeah, we flirted a few times, but like, hey, just so you know, it's all above board, fully consensual. Isn't she part of CPI now? As far as I know. She never told me there was any problem. I'm going to pretend this never happened and cut her off. Man, if you if you have if you've accidentally committed a murder and you have a body to bury, do not hand it off to Moppin because he's going to put it in like a cobblestone alleyway and cover it with like three newspaper um sheets. <laughs> what is this cover up? Hey, we ha we had a sexual relationship. It was very consensual. Nothing wrong ever happened. Also, she's a liar and it was all consensual. I'm cutting her off now. Don't talk to her. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. We flirt texted on Wednesday. It was a lot more than verbal abuse. This is dumb shit. Dude, stop incriminating yourself. I Well, I mean, keep, well, keep incriminating yourself, but like what the f <laughs> Jesus. Nevertheless, I still publicly supported Caleb and CPI. To this day, I haven't said a single disparaging thing about Caleb in public. Well, except for now, I guess. To the contrary, throughout these past few years, I've often defended Caleb against online attacks on his character, even if they came from other principled communists. 100% chance this person has railed against me online. There's no way a single member of the CPI doesn't know who I am. The last straw for me, what finally forced me to stop publicly aligning myself with Caleb once and for all, was his response to Yankee Tanky, aka Joey's, video exposing another CPI member, Keaton's, inappropriate behaviors within the group. Yeah, it looks about right. Uh, it's, oh, it's, it's in this article? It's, it's, it's in here? Oh, this guy's railing against Caleb Maupin. Caleb Maupin must admit he's, he's guilty fully. Caleb's failures and excuse me. Jason Unruh's attack on Caleb Maupin is unfaithful. Can this guy not look f***ing psychotic in these thumbs? I don't have anything against bald, bearded kings or whatever, but Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's unlisted. Oh. The truth about Keaton. 50 minutes long. We'll check the comments. Would you be able to spare some money so I can afford my rent? The really f***ed up thing is that, like, outside of people like Caleb Maupin, who I'm sure has, like, a ton of money that he doesn't disclose to people publicly, he, he's surrounded by, like, desperate poor people, you know? Like, uh, now don't get me wrong. I think that all the people associated with CPI, including this person and also the victims of his abuse, are pieces of shit. They're all Russian fascist, you know, they're, they're all red fash. I'm not taking away from that. Caleb still takes top billing as dipshit here, but like, you know, this this is a broad, this is this is very much like, a, you know, like the, the cult at the already bad group of people group. However, like, they, they got groomed into this shit, man. You know, like, Caleb sent me a link to that video, the one we just peeked at but didn't watch because it was 50 minutes long. Uh, after weeks of it completely ignoring me in the hopes that I would ask Joey to take the video down since many of the allegations against Keaton included intimate details of my personal life. And while I did agree with Caleb that Joey had no right to expose my personal life like that without my consent, he did keep me anonymous while discussing what happened, and I myself had complained to Caleb about many of Keaton's actions as they were happening while we were still living in the JBV house. Has anyone seen that video? Was Keaton, like, f***ing people, harassing people? It's always a sex thing with these people, right? Because the, the main reason people become powerful is so they can enact their fucking weirdo childhood abuse kink fetishes. Yeah, all cults are sex cults. There are no non-sex cults. There are only sex cults. But Caleb's response was always to dismiss my concerns or reassure me he'd talk to Keaton. When I reminded Caleb about the truth of what Joey was saying and how I'd made these complaints to Caleb myself, he lashed out at me, accused me of being obsessed with Keaton and demanding to know why I was so preoccupied with the former fling from last summer. This temper tantrum of his and the subsequent attacks on my character throughout that convo was when I decided enough was enough. Clearly, my dedication to socialism and CPI throughout the years and loyalty to Caleb was no longer relevant. These incidents, as well as some conversations I had later with other former members of CPI, had me fully convinced Caleb Op is not qualified to lead any political organization, period. 
If he could callously abuse, manipulate, disregard, and shun a determined group member and close friend after almost half a decade of loyal service, there's no telling what else he's capable of. Whoo! That is member two. Okay. Member one statement. Still, if I recall correctly, in the subcategory of sexual abuse. Whew. All right. Can we have TTS back? Um, if I if I highlight a segment and then click the TTS button, will it jump to it? Forward. Two. No, it will Caleb not. Caleb So I would have to, like, fast forward all the way down here? That would be kind of finicky. I would rather not. As I originally intended to keep this information to myself for the rest of my life, I would like to ensure that my right to privacy is respected. Knowing Caleb's behavior towards the youth has only deteriorated over the years, I feel the need to share my story in order to provide insight into how these issues with Caleb have evolved over time. In September 2017, I was a 22-year-old woman who found out about... See, I thought they were women because I just can't imagine Caleb Maupin being gay. He's too trad, you know? Um, I don't know. Who found out about the SYNA through a mutual friend who was also engaged in political activism. Guys, what does the SYNA refer to? My personal interest in foreign relations slash history led me to join a group that prides itself on intellectual discourse and on educating ourselves slash others about the human rights we deserve. I felt so engaged that I even included SYNA in my resume, listing that I helped with organizing events related to labor history, workers' rights, and that some of our members did food drives and laundry drives. What is, what, is, what is the acronym, guys? Students and Youth for a New America, the Youth Wing of CPI. Okay, that's great. We all noticed that Caleb was an unofficial leader of the group. He was 29 at the time, had a consistent income, and was willing to spend his income on event space, whereas we were younger and without the ability to spend much of our incomes on event space and organizing. Caleb was SINA's de facto leader, and all decisions would need his approval. Okay. Anyone who made their decisions regarding activism without his knowledge or approval could face his judgment, criticism, and gossip. When I got a new side job that involved teaching in 2018, Caleb began to mention his rough childhood to me more often. Oh, no. During one-on-one -on -one convos, he would mention different stories all tying back to these main points. He always found it hard to make friends, he was bullied badly. <laughs> I could have told you that. And he was physically abused growing up. Caleb spoke more often about being spanked at school then finally made it clear he gets sexual gratification from being spanked now as an adult, and sees a dominatrix twice a month with his wife's permission. Okay. I gotta say, twice a month, plus bringing this up with people impromptu, this is, this is a pretty serious fixation. Dominatrix twice a month, that's a lot of money. That, that, this isn't like an occasional, like, and he's texting them when he's not seeing them. This is like a non-stop spanky-tanky fixation right here. I thought it was kind of strange that Caleb was telling me all this, but I figured he was trying to be friendly and jovial, the way some friends do talk about sex, plus he had mentioned how much of a struggle it always was for him to make friends. It was weird to me because I thought our political-slash-professional relationship in SYNA was fine the way it was. I kept defaulting to having empathy for his rough situation and his self-proclaimed social awkwardness. Hmm. Another thing Caleb mentioned to me at some point in 2018 was that he would ask women if they were ever spanked as a child and like to talk to women about their experiences and share his own childhood spanking memories. I just cannot imagine having this conversation with Caleb. Ma I just, I cannot imagine how he would bring this up or how he would segue into it. I have no idea. It is just completely fucking beyond me. Caleb told me he knows this is bad, but he would take what they shared with him and masturbate about them being spanked. Not them being spanked as a child, but he would masturbate to the whole idea of them expressing their feelings on being spanked and punished. I was really shocked and disgusted that he had told me this. Wow, what an appropriate reaction to have. I was still an active SYNA member attending and organizing events. I never knew how to ask him to stop bringing up his fetish without there being any consequences. Also, I wanted to maintain empathy for him constantly bashing himself for being socially awkward. Additionally, everyone in SYNA who knew Caleb knows that he creates gossip between comrades and will privately tell one comrade, ooh, he's a messy bitch, a lot of nasty and untrue things about another. Oh, guys, you can note, note an abuser tactic here, okay? There are socially awkward people, and there's nothing wrong with being socially awkward. Well, actually, there is. You shouldn't be socially awkward. But if you are, it's like, it's not a big deal, whatever. However, people who constantly bring up their social awkwardness as a way of like getting you to not be mad at their inappropriate behavior like to, for them breaking boundaries it's like oh well, why does he keep bringing up his spanking fetish oh well it's because of his awkwardness no it's not he's bringing up the awkwardness because he's trying to like pry your boundaries 
That's it, you know? With the way he made this gossip and wanted everything to be censored around his input and approval, we hardly ever spoke to each other outside of Caleb's earshot. Oh god, she's been... She's been summoned. Speaking of spankies... Yeah. Look at her standing. What are you doing? Yeah, as a spanky tanky, she came here to defend Moffin. She's like, I love spankies. All right. Nicely done. Call for that, Vosh. Social awkwardness isn't ideal, but it isn't morally wrong. I didn't say it was morally wrong. I said it was bad because it's a hindrance. Being socially awkward hinders you. Being socially confident doesn't. Don't be so defensive now. Very awkward of you. We certainly didn't dislike each other, but he would tell us generally unsavory things about each other that we would shrug off. For example, he would tell us that one SYNA member is very spoiled and is supposedly a whiny baby that lives off money from their parents. This was an 18 to 20 year old member at the time. Okay. Then there were two other members where Caleb's negative gossip on them to me was asking me if I think they're gay on multiple occasions, and Caleb would specifically point out the things about what they do or what they wear that make them seem gay. So these were not inherently bad traits at all about these people, but we just all had this mutual understanding that speaking to each other or doing things without Caleb was a waste of time, since he planted negative ideas about us in each other's heads, and we can't really make any group decisions without him anyway. So this contributed to my fear of ever telling him to knock off the sexual conversation and sexual oversharing. I didn't want to get kicked out or have any drama created about me to tarnish my image, the way I would see him constantly complain about other members to me. At that point, Caleb would say I was very special and trustworthy and hardworking, and the other SYNA members were supposedly not as hardworking or present as I was. All right. We all see where this is going. Between February 2019 and April 2019, Caleb began mentioning the idea of a social media coach. Caleb started to increase how often he would bring up the social media coach idea. He wanted to find a woman who would text him throughout the week to check in on him and make sure to shame and admonish him if he wasn't reaching his goals and growing his following online. That's not what I thought a, sec a social media coach would be. Also, if he wants somebody to bully him for not having much social media growth, then why I thought I was doing that for him. The social media coach would meet up with him and spank his rear end at the end of the week, which he would pay for. Oh my god, is that why he's always been obsessed with me? I've been doing unpaid sex work this entire time. I feel so used. I kept once again trying to do deflecting measures, like I would tell him to check out an app called Seeking Arrangements, where he can create a profile and find someone to charter up this sexual slash financial agreement with. I wasn't exactly uncomfortable yet because I knew I could always reject any advance, but was also honestly starting to get annoying, and if he wanted his fix so bad, he needed to just go somewhere and find it, and stop talking to me about it all the time, considering the fact that I was a member of SYNA, and therefore first and foremost a comrade and activist. Again, Caleb was- Yeah, I'm gonna end up agreeing with RGR by the end of this expose, man. Maybe all sex should be illegal. Again, Caleb was simultaneously telling me I was such a kind and special friend, and such a hard-working SYNA member. I felt empathy for how he said he felt like an outcast growing up, how I'm finally a great friend that he has that he trusts, and also how disappointed he is in the other SYNA members compared to myself. I was worried if I clearly told him to stop talking about sexual fantasies and him needing prostitutes, I wouldn't be able to be an SYNA anymore or have a working friendship with him anymore. Oh no. Something clicked in my head on April 17th, 2019, when he wrote in a message that he will get in touch with his old roommate about the social media coach idea. Something, something, bottom until it's red and bruised doesn't arouse you. So you won't do it with passion. And I know there are things too, like financial domination and stuff, but yeah, I am not passionate about it. So in the end, I felt like it would be wasting their time and money, and I would go through a lot of effort for something that makes me feel gross, because I had imagined most clients are not young or attractive. My old roommate, she seemed interested in some of this. I'm going to casually bring up the social media discipline thing when I see her next week. Not directly ask her, but just kind of casually bring it up. See how she reacts. Oh, so this is somebody else talking with Caleb, indicating that this was part of like a... Yeah, casually bring it up. Pigeon, I swear to God. Pigeon, I am working. I have a job. Pigeon. You know what work is, Pigeon? No, you don't, because all you do is shit and eat. Shame. Shame her. Shame. Why do you eat so much? Why do you poop so much? Why? Mm. 
Step, 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 step. Shame. Be free. She has to let go of my shirt. Pigeon, do you understand the position you're in right now? Pigeon. Pigeon, can you thank? Ow! She tail whipped me. What are you, a Pokemon? Be free. Yeah, nothing to lose. I can't do that for you, just so you know. Only because you've mentioned it to me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I wasn't propositioning you. Don't worry. We're comrades. I don't bring this stuff into politics. He said he would talk about this idea to the roommate and see if she is interested in being a social media coach. Oh, no. Okay. So this is um, person one right here. Caleb just initially brought this up in reference to somebody else. But is that... Ah, that's that's kind of like a clever abuser tactic. Caleb Maupin is, um, is talking about how he's going to bring this up with another person, like, casually. But what he's actually doing is bringing it up casually with this person. See? Very clever, Caleb. My response to that info... My response to that information, reaction image here, was to take my chance and finally make it clear I will never be interested in engaging in acts of prostitution for Caleb. To me, I believe he was hoping I would do exactly what he had hoped would happen with his old roommate. He was talking about this idea to me often, the way he said he would talk about it to the old roommate in the hopes that she responds to the idea in a positive way. This convo on the 17th of April ended nicely with him apologizing and complimenting me, complimenting my contributions to SYNA, and how well I carry myself in my day-to-day -day life, heavily complimenting my personal financial career success. As a side note, I was doing very well for myself in 2019. I had a great job, I had a vibrant social life and hobbies, I worked for very hard both at my regular job and in SYNA, and Caleb knew all of this and complimented me very often for it. This is important for me to mention due to the way Caleb has chosen to slander my image and reputation to other combats. This conversation on the 17th of April was the first and final time I had ever made it clear I was uninterested in any prostitution and sexual involvement with Caleb. Our convos from the 17th onward, then, did focus more on politics, but he would still mention his sexual things to me, like messaging me on the 22nd. Five days. He could wait five days. Okay. Only mere days later uh, that he is getting ready to go meet his dominatrix to get spanked. I ignored that comment and continued trying to keep our conversations intellectual, jovial, and respectful. Around the same time, we were given offers to go on an all-expenses-paid trip to Venezuela to promote friendship between America and Venezuela and to promote against Juan Guaido's presidency, paid for by Venezuelan political groups. Although this sounded like an alluring offer, since it was uh, all-expenses-paid, the relationships between America and Venezuela were particularly tense in April and May of 2019 due to Guaido's insertion as president of Venezuela. At that time, Venezuelan officials made threats to shut off power at the U.S. Embassy, and American officials began plans to pull diplomats out of Venezuela. I didn't see why I should be pressured to take this free trip to Venezuela to protest against Guaido, therefore against America, and risk consequences during my time there upon my return to America. Wow! That is an impressive level of critical thinking from somebody associated with these groups. Maybe it wouldn't be great for my life, if I went to a country undergoing an economic collapse slash revolution slash attempted coup and publicly protested against the American-backed uh, uh, group and then returned to America. Hmm. This idea seemed very risky and out of touch for Caleb to be suggesting. Usually our activism was within New York City slash America. We were students and youth for a new America, and Caleb was usually the first person to speak up loudly about us making sure we behave cordial and safe outside slash online. For example, making sure we never talk about guns or promoting violence. <laughs> Same. And just always trying to make sure that we only promote safe and legal forms of free speech. Uh, so this seemed very out of character that Caleb felt insistent I needed to drop my work and take a trip to Venezuela to condemn America, then, and that I shouldn't care about any repercussions this could have upon my return back to America. Caleb's insistence that I go to Venezuela to condemn America came to a head on May 1st, 2019, where at 1 a.m. he sent me a message asking me why I and the other SYNA members don't have as much drive as him. He explained that he is so accomplished and has done so many risky political acts throughout his life, and now he has a comfortable job, which is why he couldn't go to Venezuela. Oh my God, he's pulling this shit when he's not even risking it. He's like, oh, so I, well, 
I can't go. I've got work to do here. But why Why are you all not wanting to go? Oh my god. I was thinking, like, if he's actually risking the trip himself, then at least there's some, like, credit there. But no. But it was really disappointing that none of us would go to Venezuela. In my head, this was such a joke. He stated he can't go to Venezuela because he currently has a comfy job. And he wants us to all drop what we're doing and go there in such a tense political climate during May 2019. I told him that I had to wake up early in the morning for work and that he needs to leave me alone. This person's got a, a surprising backbone for somebody, like, in a cult, you know? Something, something, and write articles, and travel the world, and be a big communist revolutionary leader, and the whole world has done everything to block me from doing that. I sold my blood plasma, I got mistreated for years in WWP, and uh, now I have a nice, comfortable job. Well known, comparatively speaking. I don't get it. Here, I'm practically begging people to do what I've fought to do my whole life. The door is wide open, and people don't want it. Why did I have to fight so hard to do what other people don't even care enough to do? My deepest apologies, I cannot speak for others, and I have already explained I care about my personal safety. It's not an issue of apologizing. You did not do anything wrong. You're just not like me. <laughs> You're just built different. I know I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, then. Where are people like me? Okay. If anyone knows Caleb, you know he's extremely persistent, pushy, wants to isolate you, and he wants to you to take huge risks with your employment slash family relationships to show your devotion and commitment to his group, and that he sends text message essays about why you're wrong and bad. 30 minutes after I told him to leave me alone and let me sleep, my phone started buzzing with incoming texts rapid fire. Yes. What ensued next was a two-hour back-and-forth argument where he tried out every manipulation tactic to try to tell me why I'm wrong for not going to Venezuela and adding in new argument components such as accusing me of being the one to have initiated the argument. He was clearly the one who initiated it. Claiming that I did this to feel superior to him and because I supposedly thought he was a freak. Okay, maybe. Because I'm a normie and I'm scared of the U.S. Embassy in Venezuela closing, so I should never have gotten involved with the SYNA in the first place, which to me was an immediate red flag about his isolating behavior. He should not want his members to ever feel unsafe or unprotected, yet he keeps making people feel complimented for taking huge risks to their safety, employment, family relations. Now I'm thinking something. Venezuela is that you don't think you'll be able to call the U.S. Embassy. You never understood what SYNA was about. And if you're scared to put being put on a list... You really should stay the fuck away from me. Wow, that is unironically good advice, Caleb Maupin. Thank you for your forward thinking and level-headedness there. It's pathetic after all the time and money I've contributed to the SYNA that this is what you chose uh, to start your attack on me over. It was not an attack on you. You have lulled me into thinking you are someone I can whine to you about my problems with. You gained my trust. You got me to open up to you. Uh, well, you included me in your problems, which I don't support. So I was opening up. Complain to me about others, comma, presumably followed by a then. I maintained my position during our whole argument. I wanted him to apologize for being disrespectful and pressuring me to engage in a situation I felt unsafe in that he himself was unwilling to do himself because of his comfy job. The two-hour convo kept going. Also, at that point, he owed me $157, which I had spotted him because he was always running out of money. Ha! Uh, I guess the, uh, dominatrix, um, I guess the, uh, dominatrix habit really does cost a lot. It really does, by the way. What, are you running a couple hundred dollars an hour with most sex workers? Like, a good, like, not low hundreds either. And twice a month, I mean, yeah, you, you could potentially be, like, upping your rent by 50%. Or, or more, more. I mean, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I didn't want to get blocked by him before getting my 157 back. Fucking Giga Chad move right there. You're like getting kicked out of the cold or whatever, and you're like, this motherfucker better not block me before I get my goddamn money back. Absolutely. I also was nervous to silence or turn off my phone because of how dramatically he twists stories about people. I felt like I, I wanted this argument to remain between only Caleb and I that evening and to get resolved by only us, ideally, without him creating gossip and lies about me to other people over this. Good luck with that. I was afraid if I truly did cut off our argument and go to sleep before getting him to stop on his own accord, I'd wake up in the morning to hundreds of messages or multiple people who had only heard Caleb's version of events asking me why I was so horrible to Caleb and a whole new messy issue of new twisted gossip and drama. Our argument goes in circles with me resisting all his manipulation attempts and him baiting me into trying to criticize him or call him names until 3 a.m. After this May 1st argument, I shared a PDF file of the screenshots between Caleb and... Uh, 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 myself, 
um, in the SYNA Facebook message group chat. The PDF file contained the entire two-hour text argument because I knew Caleb creates drama and makes lies to suit himself, so I included the whole argument. Giga Chad, move here! So that no one could ever accuse me of posting anything out of context. At the time when I shared the PDF in the SYNA chat, I told everyone that this is how Caleb speaks to me personally, and I really don't like being treated this way. At this time, no one had my back, no one cared to reach out, and Caleb kicked me out of the chat group and told me that sharing screenshots of our personal convo was wrong to do, and that he once again accused me of luring him into trusting me that I betrayed him by posting the PDF of the argument. Everyone in the chat was super confused about what the PDF even meant. They were right to be confused. It happened out of nowhere at 1am, and even by showing all the screenshots, it looked so weird why Caleb was doing this to me out of nowhere, being upset with me for not going to Venezuela in May 2019, when usually he had spoken very highly of me to other members and other members respected me as an SYNA group member. It was uncharacteristic for Caleb to be mad at me. So when I got no response from anyone in the SYNA group chat, this is when I realized everyone in the group is currently in denial and is a victim themselves. I was removed from the group chats, and since Caleb was the ringleader of everything, it was impossible for me to ever be able to come to any events or continue to help out like I used to. When I would get removed from chats, other members would try to add me back, but since Caleb was ignoring my presence, it felt useless slash hopeless for me to go any further in SYNA. I feel like on April 17th, when I shot down any notion of ever prostituting myself out for Caleb, I think he tried to act nice and normal for a bit, and then on May 1st created a strange argument over false pretenses to try to rile me up and get me pushed out. It turns out that after I got removed, he still made up lies to discredit me. Other SYNA members were confused about why I wasn't in the group anymore. I was helpful and respected, and everyone was happy to have my contributions and have me as a member. Caleb created disparaging remarks that I couldn't be part of SYNA anymore and could no longer attend group SYNA functions because I was supposedly an alcoholic all of a sudden. This parallels the situation I mentioned before where Caleb would keep gossiping about if other SYNA members were secretly gay based on what they wear, or how another member is spoiled. This is also why I mentioned earlier that in 2019 I had a great job, and how in my final argument, Caleb was the one who still owed me 157. So I found out in 2022 that Caleb told different SYNA slash CPI members different slanderous versions about me. He told some people I quit because I was an alcoholic, he told other people I couldn't keep up with the obligations anymore due to my alcoholism, but that I'm welcome to come back. Established SYNA members knew this was weird but didn't question it, and new SYNA slash CPI members didn't know who I was and didn't question it. For the record, I've never had a drinking problem. When I was 23 in 2019, I had fun drinking socially with my friends. Caleb has an alcohol allergy and cannot drink any alcohol. Wow, that is so fitting. Oh my god, he genuinely, he see, he, he's literally allergic to alcohol. That actually fits perfectly. Oh my god, it's, it's like God reaching down into his fucking gene code and turning it into, like, it's, it, this is, this is like genetic prescriptivism right here. Oh my god. Wait, is that a thing? Yeah, it is. I had alcohol intolerance, um, which is different from an allergy. Um, the difference being that my intolerance came about for me binge drinking so hard in college that my body rejected alcohol, whereas his body can't handle it by default. So, you know, I, I earned my aversion, thank you. And then I got out of my intolerance by drinking more. The worst part about this is that he might not be a low cow anymore. Speak for yourself. This has not deterred me even slightly. In addition to his gossipy slash judgmental lifestyle, I think he has a bad perception on what is or isn't a normal amount of alcohol to consume. I have never been a daily drinker. In 2019, I would probably average about four to five alcoholic drinks on a Friday or Saturday night if I went out with friends, and only in a scene where drinking is socially acceptable, like a bar slash restaurant slash music venue. And then about two to three drinks if I met a friend, such as Caleb, during the work week. I stick to the general one drink per hour rule, and in general, I intrinsically value sobriety and alcoholic moderation. Me, my family, my closest uh, people who knew me would not at all characterize me as having an issue with alcoholism, let alone an alcoholism issue that would lead me to abandon my activism. I'm explaining this in great detail because I and other SYNA members 100% believe this was a slanderous slash libelous tactic to detract from the fact that I had turned down money for sex with him. I think Caleb had devoted far too much time to talking about his sexual life and gossiping about slash slandering comrades. To me, it's very concerning, and I was partially silent from 2019 till now because I was hoping Caleb would just get the help he needs. I have never wanted to cancel Caleb, or anyone. I've always hoped Caleb would learn from his mistakes and improve himself without ever needing a public call-out to stop him from hurting any more young people. Wow, did we not learn from me too? Since when have abusers in positions of power who control organizations who try to manipulate and lie about their members ever stopped, like, on their own? Like, like they just had, like, a reflection, you know?
Unfortunately, as much as I had hoped Caleb would improve, I realized that he's only become much worse than he was to me in 2019. In March 2019, I noticed a newer member who was 19 years old begin to get favored by Caleb. Oh no. And something in my head started to feel worried this innocent person might be getting asked questions about if they have ever been spanked. It's so menacing, but it's also such an embarrassing and funny, like, thing to, like, oh no, <laughs> he's gonna talk to them about spanking. Like, it's, it's horrible, but it's so stupid. Yeah, this would be member two. Yeah, yeah, I see. This mem member had vaguely mentioned stressful moments with their parents during group meetings, which scared me to wonder if they, this could have Caleb make the connection to his spanking slash domination fetish. Imagine just being in a group setting and one person there is like, yeah, my parents have been abusive. And you you like eyeball Caleb because you know in his head the cogs are turning and he's thinking about getting spanked or something. Like, what the f***? Or that they might potentially get taken advantage of sexually by Caleb one day. The member I'm referring to is member two. This member seemed so excited to be an SYNA and to be Caleb's friend, I really didn't know what to do. I was afraid of being accused of making false accusations slash starting drama if I were to preemptively warn this member before anything bad ever actually happened. I ended up never warning this member, never speaking to this member one-on-one, -on -one, and it wasn't until 2022 that I found out the true extent of exploitation and prostitution that Caleb had put this young, innocent person through. Caleb ended up prostituting this person while they were homeless, and while Caleb told them repeatedly not to get a regular day job. Caleb told this person to not get a regular day job because this isn't what committed revolutionaries do. However, Caleb had no problem with paying them for his sexual gratification. I live with that guilt. I can't believe I never warned that member back. Okay, lesson learned, I guess. Back when I had the chance in 2019, I would have seemed crazy if I had warned them then. I urge all young members of CPI to question everything and everyone. Do your due diligence. Do not naively trust people just because they call themselves an activist or a comrade. Do not be afraid to question Caleb's credentials. Does Caleb have experience in accounting, nonprofit accounting, or positive youth development? Caleb keeps working around young people. He has taken precautions to create strict boundaries between minors and young adults. He has been formally trained. Oh, no, sorry. Has he? Has he? Has he? Has he? Not he has. Has he? Been formally trained in how to work with high school slash college freshman age students. Does Caleb even see the value in taking a step back from CPI in order to learn more about how to teach youth appropriately and work on himself? This is an opportunity for people to prove if they are a true comrade or not. I was forced out of SYNA because I did not want to be Caleb's prostitute. I have provided the background and details and have allowed SYNA members to hold my phone and look through my messages with Caleb. Will you take the side of the predators who wish to silence me, who continue to further break the law by creating libel and slander about me, who wish to intimidate victims into silence, or will you actually be a comrade and support injustice everywhere, even if it gives you cognitive dissonance? Interestingly, this might actually be a real case of libel and or slander from Caleb against this person and uh, member two, um, because there were damages accrued, a loss of uh, association of work from the lies that he told about them, and they're not public figures, meaning that they would not have to meet the actual malice standard. There, I, I doubt anything will come of it, but I think there's an actual like potential legal um, justification for those suits, if that was the case. Oh, we're getting Keaton State. Oh! Oh, we're getting the whole part three. Caleb Moppins, general abusive and exploitative behavior. Subcategory 3A, Keaton Mansfield statement. On July 16th, 2021, when I was 18 years old. I know this is like a whole epic, isn't it? It's a whole goddamn saga. They are being thorough. And you know what? I respect this. You know why? If you're calling out a public figure like Caleb Moppin, this is the way to do it. You know, you don't just do one account. You get all together all the people who have been wronged. You get them to work together to bring all the info in check. You have them, you know, um, cross-check everything. And then you drop the fucking bomb. When Caleb Maupin woke up one day to see that this was out there, holy shit, he must have fucking shit himself. You know? No warning, just fucking... Damn! Dropping the hammer. Didn't he delete his Twitter account? Yeah, he did. He can. I mean, you can always undelete it. He might be waiting for it to blow over. But yeah, he's 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 panicking. He's sweating. On July 16th, 2021, when I was 18 years old, I left rural Illinois for New York City after a phone call from Caleb Maupin asking me to become a full-time canvasser for the, oh my god, he's flying out 18-year-olds, for the Center for Political Innovation under the outreach organization called the John Brown Volunteers. I arrived in New York City that night at a hotel room in Jersey City with one bed where Joey, Yankee Tanky, had lived for several days before. Joey and I quickly got to know each other, both having to live in such a small space and travel to Manhattan daily. 
In the coming months, Caleb and I would get to know each other on a very personal level. Caleb would mention wanting to leave his wife, okay, and how miserable it was back at his hometown in Ohio. Looking back, many, if not most, of the things Caleb expressed to me in private were designed to suddenly pit Joey and I against each other, culminating with the bestowing of the Akik ring, oh no, immediately before going to Texas in December. Caleb wanted us both vying for his favor at the expense of respecting one another. Caleb saw the Akik ring in Iran. He wears one all the time because it is a symbol of power. Ah, obsession with the occult, another thing fascists tend to be into. After promising Joey and me we would both receive one, instead he only gave one to me in New York City before I left for Texas. At the time, he told me it was a status symbol and that only his most trusted inner circle, this is an 18-year-old, he just flew out to New York City, by the way, uh, could wear one like him. Therefore, people will notice we were all wearing the same ring everywhere. When I got back home to Jersey City, it was awkward when Joey noticed it and I didn't have an explanation for why I got one and he didn't. I eventually stopped wearing it because I felt disgusted with everything this represented. A manipulation tactic Caleb used uh, to make each of us think... I'm going over links after, Posadist. We were individually special to him and that he trusted each of us the most. Caleb also gave one to another member who I was very close to, Lily. This trick of playing members off each other was not limited to Joey and me. Lily also has experienced and admitted to this being a reality. When Caleb, Lily, and I were in Nicaragua in, for their November 2021 elections... Caleb would constantly complain to me about Lily's immaturity and stress how glad he was that his right-hand guy, him, did not act like Lily. When I arrived in New York City, I drove back, uh, I drove my Buick from Illinois to Jersey City, that's a rough one, to become a full-time volunteer for CPI. Very much unfamiliar with daily life in cities the size of New Jersey and New York, I put my car in the parking garage several blocks from our motel. Several months later, when Caleb wanted us to head south and connect with San Angelo Solidarity, a separate group allied with CPI, he became very angry with me when my car wouldn't start because it had sat idle from July to the end of November. Fortunately for Caleb, my mother was willing to co-sign on a dealer loan for another car, with the understanding that if this car was being used to transport members from New York City to Texas, Maupin would make the car insurance payments every month. Oh, I bet he paid those. Caleb readily agreed to this, excited to send us to San Angelino. However, since December, not a single dime has gone to uphold Caleb's agreement to make payments on the car he was being that was being used solely for his organization. Around the time of New Year's 2022, Caleb sent me a screenshot of an argument he was having with his wife. Oh no. Why? In it, you can see him mention he plans to make enough money off CPI that he can quit his job at RT. He also says blatantly he will live in a compound in the woods where he will live with the kids. I saw this on Twitter. Blue is Caleb. That's not how adults act. That's why I'm moving up in the world and you aren't. You don't have, you don't ha know have social skills. You are the one? I am asserting myself like an adult and I might get my bonus. Dream? Eventually I'm going to make enough money with CPI that I will quit RT. Then I'll leave you also. Jesus Christ. I'm going to set up a big compound in the woods where I live with all the kids and I studio to broadcast my show over the internet. All right. You are crazy. And then there's her fucking text messages bitmoji thing saying cray cray. <laughs> All right. Okay. I really don't know what to add to this. I'm sorry. After driving this car from New York to Texas. Wait, he sent this to another living person? He sent this screenshot willingly? This wasn't obtained in a subpoena? This wasn't a f***ing deposition? They didn't literally have to waterboard this out of him? Okay. Jesus Christ. After driving this car from New York to Texas, Texas to Chicago, Chicago to Kansas, and countless trips from the retreat center to the airport an hour away, the car gave out. The new car? I feel I was being tasked to drive for CPI to ensure I was not present at any facilitator meetings, despite the fact that only a few months before that, Caleb was praising me as CPI's most important asset. On the last day of the retreat, as everyone was preparing to go home, the transmission gave out, leaving me stranded in Kansas. With a new car? It must have been a used one. That sucks. Damn. After telling Caleb my car, which I put 40,000 miles on in six months. Jesus. All right. We're doing some, we're doing some, some American truck simulator shit here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, any car can die with that much mileage put on it in that time if maintenance isn't being done. 
yeah, those are Uber numbers, had broken down, his immediate concern was having drivers to make airport trips. Caleb also spoke to me about what he was doing sexually with member two. Okay. He would make inappropriate comments about him to me. Wait. Member two was being referred to as her in earlier texts. Now it's being, now they're being referred to as, okay. A couple of possible interpretations. This person is trans slash, you know, whatever. And there's some confusion slash deliberate misgendering. Possibility number two, it's a genuine mistake. Possibility number three, their identity and gender have both been kept a secret. There are only so many women, I imagine, who worked in the CPI, so it's possible they might have deliberately any old the pronouns here. It doesn't matter. It literally, like, it, it literally does not matter. Um, it's it's irrelevant to me. None of the factors here change. There is no there's there's no meaning at all um, to it. It's uh, it's fine. And in December of 2021, he admitted to me that he hired member two as a sex worker slash professional dom. Uh, he also made some very lewd comments about member two to me, including through text. After the retreat, Caleb asked me to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Kiral says they're a trans woman. I, I can't verify any of that. It's fine. Their identity is being kept a secret. If it's known they're a trans woman, their identity would be known. There can't be that many trans women in the CPI. It's fine. It, it doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, anyway, a non-disclosure agreement. Great. He didn't exactly specify what it was about, but he did give hints. Caleb said he would give me the rest of the money he owed me for allowing CPI to use my vehicle if I signed it, which he owed me prior to the creation of the NDA. You do not sign an NDA in exchange for money that is already owed to you. You go straight to the courts, and not the small claims court after this. You're owed big time money. Uh, here, here's my plan, Caleb. All right, you give me the money, or here's my agreement with you. You give me the money, or I take it to a, a fucking court. Over text, I asked Caleb if I could read over the NDA and take some time to make a decision. Caleb took this to mean I'm playing hardball and that he can do it too. What? Sign this NDA. Don't read it, okay? It's totally fine, I promise. Uh, can I take a second to read it? Why are you being such a f You want to play hardball? Okay, I'll play hardball. All right. The contract just got twice as mean. I restated that the money he owed me was accrued before the idea of this NDA was ever created. Good. Caleb's lack of concern for the well-being of any member save himself is in stark contrast to the political line he claims to believe in. I mean, I could have told you he's not a socialist. The conduct of Caleb Moppin and CPI is the leading reason I've come to realize I no longer identify with communist political circles. No! He's not a fucking communist. He's literally opposite communist positions on every possible issue. You people have such miscalibrated political chart sensors. Oh my god. You, 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 you guys are writing articles on how the Chinese government is right to fight the war on terror by incarcerating Xinjiang terrorists um, and how, like, banning femboys from TV is, like, the people's will or something. And then you're like, oh, wait, that didn't work out. I guess I'm not a socialist. Ah! Okay, whatever. Whatever. The worst case scenario is they move over to being a fascist, which they already were. So, you know, we're already at the worst possible. Joey Schantz, a.k.a. the Yankee Tanky. Their statement. Oh, we finally have a not kid. Back in June 2021, when I was 27 years old, I went to the Saxton Lectures in Pennsylvania specifically to network with folks and to join the CPI. I was strongly inspired by the words of Caleb Maupin and motivated to get out of the movement and into the masses. There I discovered Caleb was putting together an outreach team in New York City, and he invited anyone to talk to him who were interested in joining. I talked to Caleb, and he told me to come out to New York City, and he would have a place ready for me. I went to New York City only to discover he didn't have a place, and I just have to go to a hotel. Cool. Caleb told me he didn't want to pay for a hotel room just for me. At this point, I sold a majority of my possessions and used that money to pay for hotel rooms. After the end of the week, I was almost out of money, so I was forced to sell my car to pay for- You sold your car to afford another week in a hotel- oh. I used that money to pay for a room. At the end of the week, when Keaton Mansfield came to Jersey City, which Caleb felt was worth paying for a hotel room for both of us. During our time at the motel room, I used my food stamps to pay for food for me and Keaton. I got about uh, 250 a month to pay for our food. Later, another individual joined us, and my food stamps had to pay for that person as well. Caleb often told us we had a struggle to achieve socialism. Oh, no doubt. In hindsight, I see that Caleb, that was Caleb's attempt to manipulate us into not asking him for a lot of money. This is, uh, this is my line, too, when I have a segment in the title and I don't get to it. Listen, guys, 
Socialism can't be achieved without struggle. <laughs> I guess socialism really is with no food. I'm diabetic. Oh, God. And also have MRSA, which never goes away. Oh, my God. So my bad diet connected to our limited budget, ultimately leading to my sugar spiking, which fed the MRSA and caused an MRSA infection, which I had to go to the hospital for. The day I went to the hospital, the John Brown volunteers were at a political rally in Times Square. Caleb asked if I could come join my comrades at the rally as soon as I left the ho hospital, even though I really shouldn't, really should have been resting and recovering from the infection. Okay, I'll admit, I don't know what MRSA is. Sorry, I just know it's bad because of the way he said it. MRSA superbug, an infection caused by a type of staph bacteria that's resistant to... Oh, f it's one of those super diseases. Oh, gee, oh yeah, staph infection can totally kill you. Well, it's a flesh-eating virus. Oh, cool. You know, just one of those. Yeah, okay, great. Muscle deterioration, you can die. Great. Okay, nice, cool. All right. Caleb promised to take care of our food, our housing, and any other material needs that we had. Alas, Caleb failed to provide even the most basic resources to help us survive, insisting we use our canvassing con uh, contributions to cover everything. However, canvassing is slow and tedious work, and it never brought in enough income to sustain us all. Yeah, less than minimum wage. I often had to dig through garbage put out by grocery stores just so we could eat. My comrades would even live on less, because according to Caleb, this is what, this is what revolutionaries had to do to survive. We would ignore these problems, or even sometimes have fights with each other. Member 3, a uh, new member, often would get into conflicts with me and Keaton about how Caleb should be helping us more, and we would defend Caleb and his treatment of us. We would say to Member 3 we had to tolerate the mistreatment because it was for the good of the organization. Eventually, Member 3 gave up on arguing against our mistreatment and began working as an escort to help us cover our expenses. Okay, so, so that's another person who was driven into sex work to pay for... Okay. Just have to just have to keep uh, keep a count of them. The Caleb Mop and Pimping Enterprise. I was still using my food stamps to keep us fed, but there were additional and by the way, Caleb Mopin had um had plenty, plenty, plenty of money. Again, keep in mind that while his um the people he's pay he's like got here in New York are literally eating out of dumpsters, he twice a week is seeing a dominatrix. Yeah. I was still using my food stamps to keep us fed, but their additional income took care of everything else that our feeble canvassing earnings couldn't cover. It's fine, Sneaker Stump. Later, when we went to Texas, I came up with the idea of the branch of the CPI I called Bridges to Labor with the goal of building socialist reading groups within workplaces. Upon Caleb learning of this project, he would have private conversations with Keaton Mansfield, telling him I was trying to steal a spotlight, that I was jealous of Keaton as a way to manipulate Keaton to be against me. I never had any desire to steal Keaton Mansfield's spotlight. Instead, I just wanted to expand the reach of the CPI into workplaces, which I viewed as part of the goals of the CPI to begin with. Question mark? Oh yeah, it should be noted, by the way, that all the communism these guys are building is like nothing. The only thing we've heard of them doing is canvassing, and the canvassing they're doing seems to be them selling CPI USA-related material, half of that money going to Kayla Maupin, and the other half being distributed amongst all of them to pay for their food, so they only have to have to eat half their food out of the garbage. Like, okay. After an argument with Keaton's that got me kicked out of the John Brown Volunteers, Caleb offered to pay for, uh, for a ticket back home to Pennsylvania. He never offered to pay me back for my possessions I sold for our organization, including my car. He never offered to provide any type of housing until I could get myself on my feet. He simply abandoned me with $200, either to be homeless in Texas or to go back in Pennsylvania. I tried to live out in Texas, and soon realized I couldn't make enough money to get out of the hotel I was staying at, and I would soon be homeless, so I was forced back to head back to Pennsylvania. I ultimately, since getting kicked out of the Orc, have been living in an abandoned house to survive, forced into e-begging on the internet to sustain myself. Oh god, this was the guy who asked for money underneath the video that we looked at earlier, the unlisted one. That's why he was asking for money. To sustain myself while in between jobs, this has affected my public image and has thus affected my ability to make content organized in the future. Yeah, you guys remember when Caleb Maupin, when I said that, like, it's okay to, to, to punch, like, Red Fash or whatever, and Caleb was like, you would punch me. That, that debate deserves a retrospective, man. I feel, I, like, holy shit. Genuinely, like, evil, right? Like, like, out, outside of the jokes, and there are plenty of jokes you can make, like, genuinely an evil man. I think if, if there's if there's anything that you can like learn from this, it's that like many authoritarians, this is so common with fascists. 
Um, they don't believe in anything outside of power. I've said that a million times, and wow, is this not an endorsement of that belief, right? Like, that's all they believe in. He obviously doesn't give a shit about any set of principles. There's no value he holds. Sexual gratification and the ability to manipulate young, vulnerable people into doing what he says, that's it. He seems to bring people into the organization exclusively to pit them against each other so that he can, like, feel powerful over the, the clout they're fighting over, the attention and desperation. Um, and that's it. Like, there's literally nothing other than that. It's it's completely empty outside the power fantasy. There's no actual politics underlying it outside whatever. Like, somebody like Caleb Maupin could believe anything, or could more accurately pretend to believe anything. They gravitate most commonly towards authoritarianism because that's the actual, like, ideology closest to what they believe. But he could be anyone. There are people like him who are, like, free-range loving hippies. There are cults that have formed surrounding, like, any basic set of ideas. They don't really believe in any anything. The leader, I mean. They just believe in power. That's it. It is only through coincidence, I guess, that Caleb Maupin happened to settle on an ideology, at least nominative, nominatively, that is as pro-power as he actually is in his heart. This has affected my public image and thus affected my ability to make content and organize in the future. Because of these events and the experiences of others explained through their testimony, to me it seems as if Caleb doesn't actually want to build a think tank, but instead build an organization of yes-men willing to do whatever Caleb wants. To maintain that pool of yes men, he will weed out the people who won't follow his orders by manipulating members against each other. We were talking about, like, um, rehabilitative justice before, but, like, if you took Caleb Maupin and then every murderer in jail, I legitimately believe that, pro like, 90% of murderers should be let out before he should. Like, there's a better justification for keeping him away from society forever than there is for almost anyone else in jail. Because, like, there are plenty of murderers that are in there on circumstance, you know, stuff can be changed. He is, like, emotionally and ideologically committed to gratification from the abuse of others like that it's like it's like a, 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 a what would you call it ontologically evil it's it's pure malice it's it's not there's it's not harmful through outcome alone it's the the root of what he is 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 he it's it's a it's an axiomatic thing you know Further, Caleb has broken his promises to take care of those who join his org. I'm incredibly disappointed because, quite frankly, Caleb is the whole reason I'm a communist. Ugh. It pains me to admit the man I was willing to follow to the ends of the earth has mistreated me and many other comrades. Caleb has duped me, he has duped many, and he is an endangerment to many within these circles. I'm disappointed on who Caleb has revealed himself to be. Not a revolutionary, but a grifter trying to build a cult. 3C. DL's statement. We're going back in time. Truly is the memento of manifestos here. I first formally met uh, Caleb Maupin in Philadelphia in July of 2016. During the DNC, I was protesting and running events with World Can't Wait at the time. I was 18 years old, of course you were, and had enrolled to begin college in Manhattan just a month ago. Caleb said he wanted to speak with me once I moved to Manhattan for school. He had an idea for a new political project. This is how our relationship began and the seeds were planted. Throughout the earlier years of our relationship, he acted as a guide and provided me with some direction and opportunities. It wasn't until later that I realized this was largely to help his own image and not out of any genuine spark he saw in me. When I first moved to Manhattan, I hardly knew anybody, of course. Caleb had my undivided attention and confided in me multiple times that I was one of the few people who understood him, he saw such potential in me, etc. Fast forward to 2020, our relationship took a turn for the worse. Wow, four years skipped, okay. When I was forced to move back to PA because of the economic situation brought on by the pandemic, Caleb repeatedly expressed his opposition to me remaining with family for an extended period of time. I thought this was weird, but didn't think much of it because the plan wasn't for me to remain in PA for too long anyway. Of course, the pandemic and the lockdowns lasted longer than we initially thought. Throughout 2020 and 2021, Caleb repeatedly tried to convince me to drop everything and move back to New York City slash New Jersey. He was insistent that my continuing to have a relationship with my family and childhood friends was the root cause of all the issues in my life. Of course. He said I would never get anywhere or get a career like this if I didn't shun them and have minimal contact with any of the people I held close to my heart. His efforts to get me to isolate myself from my family and friends would intensify when I come to him when I was experiencing pits of my mental health and was more vulnerable. There were times when I was crying to him about how unhappy I was generally in life, not even bringing up my family or other personal relationships, and his advice to move into some hotel in New Jersey with other people I hardly knew. His advice was to move into some hotel in New Jersey with other people I hardly knew within the next few days. He wanted me to disappear in the eyes of my friends and family and join the John Brown Volunteers. 
It was at this point I realized this was also a point that he would bring up any time I went home for holidays or long weekends. Man, even long weekends? Does he text you when you spend too long in the bathroom? Whenever I was outside a sphere of influence or control. Whenever I would express that there were people in my life I did not intend to drop, he would be visibly upset with this and continue to urge me to do so. I thought this was bizarre, but I figured it was just a friend being overzealous in trying to convince me to do things they were convinced would make me happier. Of course. In July of 2021, I helped put together the CPI conference in Saxton, PA. I drove from my location in PA to pick Caleb up in New York City, then drove to Saxton, back to New York City, and back to my location in PA in order to check out the venue Caleb selected. This day was over 12 hours of driving on my part, with zero compensation besides gas, despite my suggestions to make the trip easier on me. Once I got to the conference site a day or two early to set up and train to be a moderator, I realized how, again, uh, 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 once again, how nefarious a lot of the tactics and methods Caleb were pushing were. Each of us were given a few attendees to look after. We were instructed to practice deep listening and never break eye contact with the people we were speaking with, a sort of weird, psychologically intimidating practice. Everything at this conference was orchestrated to the last detail by Caleb, people's reactions to lines of his speeches. Jesus Christ, seriously? Okay, truly Stalin-esque uh, attitude towards uh, uh, commanding here. Attendees in the inner circle had certain lines to rehearse and perfect to Caleb's liking, and conversations were simulated in order to elicit certain responses. A few months later, Caleb invited me to come along on a CPI delegation to Nicaragua, along with himself and two other CPI members. The trip would be around a week long. At first, I was interested and excited about the prospect of going to Nicaragua, but I soon found out it would be logistically impossible. I was paying housing costs, had a full-time job, bills, a car payment, etc. I couldn't shell out extra hundreds of dollars for a specialty COVID test, extra costs associated with a trip, etc. At the time, I did not have any paid time off, so all the time off from the trip would also be unpaid. I especially couldn't afford to be stranded in Nicaragua or Mexico like many other delegations because a specific COVID restriction wasn't met. Caleb did not understand this and argued with me about it for days. It was at this point I believe he realized he didn't have any control over me or practical influence over me, not like I was, not like when I was 18, 19, or even 20. Ah, uh, the glow up. My main concern with the trip turned out to be well placed because his delegation then got stranded in Mexico for an extra couple of days because of specific COVID test result specifications. The trip I already couldn't afford would have been a financial disaster for me. Much to my surprise, Caleb demanded I send him $500 while they were in Nicaragua for the flight I didn't take and for refusing to go to Nicaragua. Okay, credit where credit's due. Sigma move from Caleb Moppin. Absolutely. Yeah, can you, can you comp me for that flight ticket you didn't buy? Absolutely. That's how I am with all my girlfriends. Ugh, I go out to dinner on my own and then I bill them for the extra meal they could have had. That's what I've been saying this entire segment. Uh, fellas, take notes from Caleb. No, please don't do that. Caleb explained they had raised the money for my ticket. I wondered why he felt into Wait, if they raised the money for the ticket, then they have the... It's still their money. They didn't buy that ticket. It's still the... Okay. I wondered why he felt entitled to $500 that didn't come out of his pocket. When I was offered a trip to Venezuela through my own contacts there shortly after the Nicaragua debacle, I took it. The expenses were covered, and the COVID test didn't pose a problem because of different restrictions. About a month after I got back, having not heard from Caleb or CPI, I reached out to Caleb as to why this was. Caleb was furious with me. He called my trip to Venezuela a big F you to him, and that he was livid, and I didn't notify or consult him. He said I didn't belong in group settings and didn't understand what being in an organization entails. He also suggested that maybe you should ask yourself why you had a total of three friends in your entire post-secondary educational experience. Ooh, chat's getting called out. We eventually agreed to stop arguing and came to a rough understanding. What understanding? If somebody's throwing insults like this at you, just call him ugly. But if somebody's being like this to you, you don't need to, like, resolve the argument. Just seek to destroy his ego. People like Caleb Moppet have tiny, fragile egos. Just, yeah, just, like, just start making fun of him. Like, yeah, what, what you don't, you don't need to reconcile after that. What the f***? We eventually agreed to stop arguing, came to a rough understanding, but it was clear our relationship was on a greater decline than before. You think? This discussion with him was in December 2021. This was the last time we had a substantive conversation besides small talk. 
I hadn't thought much of my experiences with Caleb and CPI until I reached out to other people who had also left the group in the past few months. When I found out some of the exact same lines Caleb heaped upon me had also been said to other CPI members, the dots started to connect. All the people who Caleb approached share a couple things in common. They feel lost, they have little sense of belonging to a supportive community, and they have some problems with families and friends. Uh, they are disillusioned, they have little to no direction, they have low self-esteem, they're longing for a purpose and want to change the world for the better. These are fair um, uh, uh, call-outs. However, guys, I have some advice for you, okay? If you're in any environment, I mean literally any, uh, a group, a friend group, uh, a workplace, a class group, any, literally anything, and somebody leaves that group under circumstances that you don't fully understand, reach out to them and learn what happened. Unless there is no ambiguity. Like if there's a friend group and all fucking five of you are together and then one of them flips out, does horrible shit, then leaves. So it's like, okay, well, you know, like right there, you know. But if there's any ambiguity, always know why somebody left because they almost certainly know something that you don't know. It's almost always worth knowing, you know. And if anyone doesn't want you talking to them at all, that means they're afraid of you hearing their side of the story. Uh, which means that you should, that that's like a, that's like a suspect a thing on their part, you know? Like, if they're like, yeah, I think they're going to lie about it, but you're free to ask them. That's fair. Sometimes people are liars that, you know, that happens. Uh, but if they're like clearly uncomfortable with you hearing from them, like the other side of the story, huge problem. You should always look for it. They're almost always younger from 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have little we've we've heard two people who have been prostituted now for for the for the group we haven't we've only heard a couple there are dozens of people who have been a part of CPI probably hundreds in total over the existence of the org we haven't heard from all of them have little experience in the political realm and crave guidance these traits also make somebody the perfect candidate for grooming or cult manipulation Caleb's obsession with public speaking's power of persuasion as well as his obsession with manipulative psychology uh oh I also stare people directly in the eyes oh shit. Makes a lot of more lot more sense with the knowledge I now have. Caleb made me feel like a star pupil or something to that effect when I was manipulative, or sorry, when I was manipulable and also providing large amounts of exposure and clout for himself and his org. Also himself. Also, I made it clear that I was not just a manipulable pawn of his. I was dropped gradually from the interest afterwards. Uh, I believe he has a vision for CPI to be a loose cult around himself. All the reading material is written by him and is always on sale at every event. Yeah, this is uh, this is how I felt about. Um, oh God, who knows what I'm talking about? They're that post Maoist group, Bob Durgan. Do Bob? What what what's the name of that guy who's written 50 million books and has a cult around him now? Bob Avakian. Yeah, Bob Avakian. Oh, yeah. First sociological conference I ever went to, I get these glassy-eyed staring at me. They were all like 50-year-old women telling me if I'd heard the good word of Bob Avakian. He's written like five trillion books, and all of them are about Bob Avakian thought and how Bob Avakian is going to single-handedly solve everything. And you'll know if you, too, buy five Bob Avakian books. Yeah. If we go to the book section for the Center of Political Innovation, what do they got on sale here? Fidel Castro exposes the synthetic left. Introduction by Caleb Maupin down here. Oh, it's just a compilation of Fidel Castro's columns. That's lazy. So we just did an intro? Okay. Jesus is a socialist. And this is a compilation of Bible verses, which I saw a debate where a Christian was calling him out on this. Uh, edited by Caleb Maupin and Keaton Mansfield. Remember that name? Bread tube serves imperialism. That was written by Caleb Maupin and has a chapter on me. I haven't written any books and I uh, make more money than Caleb Maupin. I wonder if he gets mad about that. He does. It makes him angry. This one, Caleb Maupin, right here. Uh, this one, uh, Caleb Maupin, about Islamic socialism in Libya. This is the pro-Gaddafi uh, book. Oh no, sorry. This is literally just the book Gaddafi wrote with an intro by Caleb Maupin. So Caleb Maupin's main grift seems to be pulling lines from other socialist figures and republishing their work in the West and having an intro where he talks about how, like, this is true socialism. Except Gaddafi isn't even nominally a socialist, so in this case it's just Islamic fascism. We Are City Builders, an educational textbook by Caleb Maupin. Right, yeah, you get the, you get the deal. It's a cult. Yeah, 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 yeah. He would constantly complain he's not recognized by the world enough. Oh, no wonder he hates me. That he should be a communist rock star. I believe that there are people currently in CPI who are in the same position that I was in when I was 18 or 19. You know, by the way, that right now internally, Caleb Maupin is frantically trying to keep all of the new young people at CPI USA 
from uh, reading this Medium article. Like, he's, like, telling them it's all lies and how, like, you know, if, you, if you're if you seen, like, reading this, like, it means you doubt him and that you're betraying him by even giving it credit or... Yeah. I hope they're able to understand the danger of the situation before they, too, outlive their usefulness for Caleb. This is not about politics. I hope all the people who feel let down by these revelations about Caleb and CPI do not lose interest. There's a place for non-identity politics-centered populist organizing. Oh, f All right, well, I don't even care about you, then. You're like... All right, guys, listen, the problem with Caleb Maupin wasn't the politics, all right? He just turned out to be a cult leader. Sit. We need to go find another fascist who likes red flags. Actual quick and important tweet. As of 3 p.m. August 21st, 2022, the Executive Committee for the CPI has unanimously voted to dissolve the organization in its entirety and all operating facets. Oh! It's, it's over, kiddos. Damn! Wowza! Um, well, Maupin basically controls the CPI, so this is like a concession from him, right? This, it's not like there are other people in the CPI who can dissolve it without his permission. This had to have been done by him, um, and it's being framed as like a neutral decision or whatever. It's over. It's over. It's over. This came out four minutes ago. It's over. Here's another statement from the CPI. Important update. Statement on the allegations of abuse and sexual misconduct leveled against CPI Director Caleb Maupin. This is an older tweet. Disturbed and outraged by recent allegations of misconduct, the um, inappropriate, uh, the abuse of inappropriate sexual behavior committed by the organization's director illustrated were previously unknown to the rest of the leadership structure. Oh, wait, they've unconditionally expelled Maupin from the organization. Okay, I see what's going on here. I think this is a front right here. I think, um, I think Maupin wanted to dissolve things, and this was the best that he could do. I think that he he needed to dip because there was no shot of this being held together anymore, and um, it, he was allowed out uh, as long as it was it was interpreted as like a banishment, not just like a neutral thing. Yeah, I think so. That's that's my guess. You really don't think they could have just expelled him? No, I don't think Caleb would have built the CPI in such a way that he could have been expelled. All of these testimonies we're getting made it clear he was the absolutely in charge of the organization. I have a feeling that this was a conditional thing. He gets the fuck out right now immediately or this gets worse. Because now that this information's in the public, I have a feeling that this shit is probably not the worst set of accusations that could be brought against him. So maybe there was an agreement reached where if he dipped right now, or he felt that if he left immediately and just fucking fled, deleted his Twitter, deleted his Facebook, fled everything, that they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't bring the worst against him. Uh, and then after his, after his, like, removal, they just dissolve the organization. That's my guess. He might lay low for some length of time and then eventually try to rebrand, but it's going to be pretty tough. Caleb's official statement. A lot of lies about me and what's gone on in CPI are being told, but clearly I've made some very big mistakes. Classic. I need time away from social media to get the help I need to ensure I never bring any aspect of my political da, 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 sex life in my political spaces. I also need time to straighten out my personal life and deal with how this affects my family. When I feel I'm ready, I'll likely return to social media, but these things will take mine. This is a very standard cope post. Very, very standard cope post right now. Uh, uh, not, not, yeah, it's a YouTuber apology. That's my guess. I could be wrong. There's no guarantee. I'm just interpreting. I have no way of knowing for sure. But my guess is that there's more dirt on Caleb Maupin than what came out here. And that this, like, this, like, expulsion from CPI and then its dissolution was the, was, was like the, okay, if I do this, you won't tell best bet that he had. That's my guess. So, you know, wacky stuff. Wowza. Madeline's statement. Oh, sorry. One second. I hear the cat doing a thing. Oh, by the way, super unrelated, but I just caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Do I not have such a clean beard lineup right now? I'm trying to do everything now with the trimmers rather than, than, than clippers, like, like little scissors, because I feel you can do it so much faster if you don't use any clippers. I feel like, um, cause I just like, v -v -v, and then with the, the lower part of the beard right here, I just set it to like mid length and then v -v, like for a quarter inch at the top, that gave it a bit of a, not really a fade, but you know what I mean? We have almost 10k viewers. Oh shit, shouldn't waste time. Hey, if you're watching this right now, make sure. You know what? Don't I don't even care about liking the stream. Uh but do subscribe. I love you. Uh, uh you know, lots of cool stuff happening. And hey, uh now that Caleb Maupin uh is uh is 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 done, uh there's now uh one fewer fake socialist for me to compete with, huh? Now let me get you on the opposite side of fake socialism, the pro-NATO uh hyper-American chauvinist uh Himars Lockheed leftist side, fake socialism. Yeah, get in there.
Yeah, get the alternate perspective. All right, we're building our own cult with far, far, far more people. And uh, instead of the whole manipulation, abuse, sexual, whatever, the actual cult is just trying to direct as much of your funding as possible over to uh, Lockheed Martin, you know? I will lie about, you know, I will, betrayal will happen in, in, the, in the process of extracting that wealth and giving it to our, our glorious uh, arms manufacturers. But it won't be like weird, cringe sex stuff, you know? My uh, horse cock kink is, uh, is, is between me, God, and the hundreds of thousands of people who consume my content and see me making those jokes every time. All right, Madeline's statement. I became involved with Caleb Maupin's think tank, CPI, in December of 2021 when I was 23. Recent. What is Jimmy Dore going to say about this? So far, actually, I've seen kind of like dead silence. I, I think a lot of people who are adjacent to Caleb Maupin have been um, keeping suspiciously quiet about it uh, for understandable reasons. Since my involvement, there have been a few incidents which have alarmed me regarding Maupin's direction of CPI and the treatment of his members. I will be focusing on one personal conversation as well as a general overview of his uh, recent political retreat in June. Oh, one last thing, by the way. Keep in mind that in Caleb Maupin's apology message, he talked about it being inappropriate for him to bring up sex. He didn't mention anything about like the cult or the abuse behavior. And I think the reason for that is people like Caleb Maupin, who I consider emotionally damaged. When I, when I, I, when I say brain damaged here, I mean it in a purely non-comedic sense. I mean that the way his brain is wired to treat and receive and perceive other people is just broken. It does not function the way that people should. You know, that might be a relativist take, but it's one I'll defend to my dying day. Those brains are not functional. And I think as a product of that, I think that what Caleb Maupin sees here is a tactical error. He shouldn't have brought up the sex stuff because that looks bad optically. The whole manipulating dozens of people into being like his stooges in a cult, not, I don't think it even occurred to him that that's a bad thing to do. I don't think people like him understand they're doing something wrong. I think they're megalomaniacal. I think they think that, I mean, listen, earlier it's, um, he should be a communist rock star. I think he thinks that he just deserves that power just like innately as a, it's just as like a d product of divine, you know, of, of providence. And that like, it, he, not only does he not apologize for it because he doesn't feel bad. I don't know if he's emotionally capable of understanding that's the main bad thing that he did. You know what I mean? It's like how narcissists are like incapable of recognizing when they've hurt somebody else because they always make it about how they've been hurt. Like they can't, it's like their brain has like a fail switch in it or something that keeps them from understanding that. I think he might be in that position. I, I genuinely think like brain broken, no think, head hurty. Yeah. A conversation that struck me as strange in March 2022 seems to have deeper significance given the info brought to light by other members. Caleb told me a story of President LBJ spanking students he was teaching while in Texas in the 1920s. <sighs> I thought this was odd. I think spanking was pretty common back then. Um, but then LBJ was also a pervert. Who knows? I thought this was odd as the story doesn't, didn't really have much bearing on our conversation. <laughs> she just brought it up out of nowhere. And I wasn't sure how to respond to it. It felt out of place. I said, I think spanking children is an immoral thing to do. It is my feeling that Caleb purposefully brought up the story in order to test the waters on my reaction to corporal punishment slash spanking or to encourage me to discuss my own experience if I had any. This lines up with the info brought up by member one. Give, you mean member two? Uh, uh, um, member two was the... Whatever. Given the fact that he has admitted to subtly hinting at a sexual fetish or outright asking women their thoughts on it, it seems to me that this was his way of testing my reaction. While my particular experience here, benign, uh, it seems to fit a pattern of Caleb bringing up the topic of spanking with people who are unaware of his sexual proclivities related to it. If I had not made it clear I was against that sort of punishment, Caleb may have used that convo to later open up about a sexual fetish with me as he has with others. The weird thing is, like, you can think spanking children is immoral, but still participate in it in a kink sense. So it seems like Caleb Maupin doesn't just somebody doesn't just want somebody to like do the kink with him. He wants somebody who's like ideologically aligned with this like daddy punishment that like it's not enough to like role play it. Like he has to believe there's some weird stuff going on here. Obviously. My second concern is the fact that Caleb made it clear he has the intention to direct his members in a cultish manner. Many members know he enjoys reading about cults, okay, and will discuss the history of cults over live streams, etc. However, observing his direction of CPI made it obvious he wants to implement some of the tactics he's read about. 
Guys, when somebody starts telling you that they extensively read on, like, serial killers and, like, human mutilation stories or whatever, I, like, they have, you have to pick up the hints that you can, okay. I was selected as facilitator for his June CPI retreat and noticed multiple instances of these bizarre tactics at the facilitator training. First, an exercise of deep listening was conducted in which facilitators were instructed to maintain continuous, unbroken eye contact with the attendee, show engaged body language, and ultimately memorize the conversation in order to make the attendee feel closely bonded to the facilitator. There, were, uh, there was then a compliment-giving slash receiving exercise <sighs> done in order to rehearse interacting with guests. Caleb also requested that retreat facilitators approach attendees in the morning and ask them about their dreams from the night before. Okay. The con if, some if, if a fucking politics convention facilitator approached me and asked me about my dreams last night, I would have to restrain myself from punching them. The content of the retreat was going to, quote, affect people not only on a conscious level, but also a subconscious level. And Caleb wanted to learn about the psychological effects of his political retreat on the attendees. He also explained that attendees should be separated from those who they arrived with in order to, uh, for them to make friends with others. Thirdly, facilitators were made to practice... So the actual purpose of these, like, tanky conventions is just to find more people to induct into the cult. That's it. All of the showboating online is just a pretense for the actual purpose. I know CPI dissolved. We just saw that. I quote tweeted it. This included multiple minutes... What's wrong with having a true crime hobby, lol? Oh, we'll get to you, true crime lovers, but not now. Of chanting different political slogans and phrases. Malpin explicitly said this activity was meant to break the taboo around group chanting. Group chanting was used often throughout the entire retreat. The taboo is there because it's a known tactic for indoctrination. Usually with some sort of cue that prompted facilitators to begin the chant. It was clear that some of the attendees were put off and made uncomfortable by this. Lastly, Caleb had facilitators repeatedly rehearse his big entrance. This consisted of prolonged clapping when he entered the room. Oh my god, they rehearsed this. Him giving out handshakes and hugs and extended chanting. Caleb told us he wanted to jolt people. I'm sorry, jolt people. Upon his arrival to the retreat building. This rehearsal was repeated three times. While these activities may come across as strange or awkward, it's concerning that they show the beginning stages of Caleb's implementation of manipulative tactics. Beginning stages. It is one thing to want to foster an uplifting positive environment. It's another thing to use cultish tactics and mechanically rehearse certain behavioral cues in order to manipulate people. I have met a number of excellent, genuine individuals through my work with CPI who I am so glad to call friends. It saddens me to see these people be unknowingly used for Caleb's own personal gain rather than have their talents as political activists be used for authentic anti-imperialist purposes. All of us were brought together because of an interest in building a strong, compassionate political community the ambitions of one self-interested person should not supersede the political goals of all of us. Yeah. Hold on, I'm clearing a couple links here. Uh, this is a tweet from Keaton Manfield, one of the people who corroborated a story earlier. A ring of loyalty to Maupin given to me in December before going to Texas, now worn by the one and only CPI execs to loyal to Maupin. Of course, there is no CPI anymore. But there you go. There's Keaton wearing the goddamn uh, promise ring. Sheesh. Uh, is that not Keaton? He just said, that's me wearing it. That's Keaton. Nix, a.k.a. Flame of Liberations, statement. 4A. Corroboration from other members. To be clear, I'm not writing this statement to shed light on abuse that I faced because I do not believe I was a victim of anything of much significance, but I am writing this to establish how far back it said now worn by another person. Yeah, as in now worn. I thought that was a photo of him. Oh, that's a new guy wearing Keaton's ring. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. I'm writing this to establish how far back Caleb and I go in organizing it and that I verified the statements made by other members who were abused by Caleb Maupin. I had considered Maupin to be a close comrade um, since the year 2014. I was 19 years old at the time, of course. For the past eight years, I'd consistently defended him and promoted him. I first began organizing with Maupin, in the spring of 2014, when he was a prominent member of the Workers' World Party, he was eventually pushed out of the WWP in late 2015. He would go on to form Students and Youth for a New America, uh, SYNA, in 2016. After learning about SYNA, I eventually joined the group in early 2017. Eventually, Member 1 also joined SYNA in 2017. She contributed a tremendous amount to SYNA. I considered her to be a very committed comrade. She brought so many of her friends to SYNA events to introduce them to our politics and try and get them involved in organizing with the group. 
Eventually, in late 2018, Member 2 joined SYNA. During this period, CPI, Center for Political Innovation, started up. Although CPI did not exist as a formalized concrete group, a group as it exists now, not anymore, we would sometimes hold events in the name of CPI and sometimes in the name of SYNA, such as the, guys, I've read this whole article out loud. Give me a bit of slack. It's a lot. We'll, we'll check how many words this is when we're done, but this was a 57-minute article estimated for reading, not even for reading out loud. Going forward, we would have events sometimes in the name of CPI, sometimes in the SYNA. One of the best actions I think the CPI did during this period was leafleting and doing outreach at a Bernie Sanders rally in 2019. Me, member one, member two, DL and Caleb, we gave out info about the truth on Venezuela. At the time in 2019, there was an ongoing coup attempt by the U.S. against Venezuela, and we were there to try to give Bernie Sanders supporters an anti-imperialist message. That's the only time I've ever seen them use anti-imperialist in a context which is actual anti-imperialism. I agree, Guaido should have been kicked out. Message. And try to push them in a more anti-imperialist direction. A few months later, in May 2019, Member 1 posted screenshots of a confusing exchange where Caleb was picking a fight with her for some reason that was not clear. In the exchange, she was clearly asking him to stop, but he continued to pick a fight with her. I had a suspicion that there was something more to the convo, but I did not want to pry. Member 1 was pushed out of the group following this incident. Caleb claimed that Member 1 was an alcoholic in an attempt to discredit her, he also tried to come up with bizarre psychoanalysis of her, claiming she wanted to leave the group, but didn't want to be seen as letting everyone down. She wanted to be kicked out of the group. A very contrived explanation. Yeah, I'd fucking say so. <sighs> Caleb would try to claim member one was not kicked out of the SYNA slash CPI, but was very clear that she was not welcome at meetings or events, and she was removed from the group chat, so she was indeed pushed out of the group. At the time, I gave Caleb the benefit of the doubt. I'd known him for five years and figured he would be honest about the situation. Today, it's now clear that was not the case, as Member One's testimony made clear. Since getting back in contact with her, I have gone over the messages exchanged between her and Caleb during that final argument, uh, as well as when she made clear she had no interest in doing anything sexual with him, and previous messages where he would talk about his particular sexual interest. I have seen these exchanges in full, direct from Member One's Facebook Messenger app, what she says is indeed the full uh, and true version of events. How close are we? Or moderately close. I had to go exactly at three. I could not have anticipated how long this was. I'm going to have to um, <clears throat> pick up the pace faster than TTS. Faster than anyone could have predicted. With regard to Member 2, they first got involved in SYNA in the fall of 2018. Member 2 gave a very good class in the history of U.S. imperialism in Haiti and was very active in organizing the groups over the years. In 2021, Member 2 was active with the newly formed John Brown Volunteers, which was a full-time outreach team with CPI. Member 2, along with Joey and Keaton, would do consistent outreach to people on the street and try to get them to buy buttons which said student debt crossed out. Half the money would go to the John Brown Volunteers members to survive off of. The other half would go to CPI or Caleb Maupin. The JBVs would spend hours doing this outreach, and as you can imagine, they would bring in very little money, and only half of it would go for them to live off. The JBVs were staying at a hotel in New Jersey and would commute back and forth to New York. I knew that they were not living in good conditions, but I only found out later just how bad those conditions were. I later found out that Member 2 asked Caleb if the JBVs could just get normal jobs instead of selling buttons to make money to survive off. They would make more money. Caleb rejected the idea, which indicates the idea of selling buttons was not just an ineffective and foolish idea, considering that trying to sell random people on the street buttons was not bringing in that much money, but a calculated plan to keep the JBVs in an impoverished situation so they would stay reliant on him. Yes. This is clearly an abusive cult tactic. At the time, I was able to overlook this because in my mind I was thinking, this is a not-so-well-thought-out plan by Caleb, and being that I wasn't doing full outreach like the JBVs, I didn't feel that it would be appropriate for me to criticize the idea. I was not yet aware Member 2 had suggested that the JBVs get regular job where they would be making much more money. I was also unaware Member 2, who was in massive student loan debt, was resorting to sex work for survival. I was all the more disturbed to find out that Caleb Maupin was fully aware of this and that Member 2 was using that money to feed themselves and the other JBVs. As if this was not horrendous enough, I'd come to learn that Caleb Maupin was demanding that Member 2 fork over 200 a month to him for the organization. Yeah, at the time, Member 2's testimony didn't make it clear, but the 200 a month that she was paying towards the hotel was not for the hotel. It was already being paid to by her. It was literally just pimping. This is just pimping. That's it. That's all it was. I thought the 200 was her being her being expected to pay a portion of the CPI's cost. It, it was just money being given to Caleb Maupin for her sex work. 
This is horrendous behavior on Caleb's part and is far beyond anything acceptable to do to anyone, let alone someone who could call you a comrade. I was even more disgusted to find out that in December of 2021, Caleb approached Member 2, someone he knew was in a very vulnerable situation economically, and requested that Member 2 do sexual favors for him for money. In case Caleb tries to argue Member 2 was not part of CPI at the time, I have a screenshot of him from late December where I asked him if Member 2 was still part of the group. I had asked him because there were rumors circulated about him online. At the time, I did not believe the rumors, but in this same screenshot, you can also see he accidentally admits to something I had not already known. She's rather two-faced. Member 2? Member 2, we've seen this. Member 2, we flirted, texted many times. Always consensual. Isn't she part of CPI now? As far as I know, she's never told me there was any problem. I'm going to pretend this never happened and cut her off. Strange. We flirt texted on Wednesday. Eh, more verbal abuse. Why did he say this? He's not very smart. He's not smart. He's not charismatic. He's just malicious. There you can see he believes Member 2 is still part of the group. I was surprised when he mentioned verbal abuse. This was the first time Caleb had mentioned any of the sexual stuff to me over the years, and I believe he said it because he had lost track of what he told to whom over the years. Yep, that's what happens when you tell different lies to every everyone in your org. To me, this was the first major sign there was something very troubling going on behind the scenes. As you can see in my next text, I tried to cover my ears and look away. I tried my best to give him the benefit of the doubt. As months passed from that incident in late December 2021, Caleb began to talk about Member 2, who hadn't been at CPI meetings or events since 2021. Caleb would say things to the, member, to the effect that Member 2 was a drug addict and that they could not be a part of CPI anymore. Caleb also told a story about an incident in California where he and Member 2 had gone out to dinner with local CPI members, and that Member 2 disappeared, and they found Member 2 lying on the sidewalk, curled up outside the restaurant, and it was because Member 2 was using drugs. What? Caleb Maupin hasn't smoked a blunt in his life. What the f*** is he talking about? They go to dinner and then like, sorry, one second, they leave to the alley to just like curl up on heroin. What the f*** is he talking about? This story did not sit right with me. Yeah, because it took place in September 2021. He was talking about it to me and others in June 2022. It was the first time I heard about it. It was very suspicious because if it had indeed been true, I almost certainly would have heard about it shortly after it happened. It appeared to me to be a way of Caleb further discrediting member 22. Siri, er, member, uh, member two. Jesus Christ, that's such a bad lie. You know that he has no experience with drugs whatsoever. Like, yeah, he, she, she, she was at the dinner, and then after she finished the dessert, she pulled out a, a paper napkin with a block of heroin in it, and she ate all the heroin right in front of us. And then she screamed and ran out and was quivering on the alley outside. Okay. Yeah, dude. I got in contact with one of the CPI comrades in California who was there and asked him what he remembered happening. As I feared, what he said did not match up with Caleb's version of event. He did not say member two was laying down or curled up, but that member two was outside smoking a cigarette. <laughs> ah, well, same thing, you know. Regarding the cult aspect of CPI, Caleb made it very clear he'd studied cults in depth. He would often talk about this cult or that cult during his YouTube live streams. Caleb's longtime friend and ally, Daniel Burke, had also told me that Caleb had gone to a meeting of cult and studied their tactics. Okay. There is nothing inherently wrong about studying such things if the intention is to just be better informed on the topic. But the reason why this needs to be mentioned is because if such tactics are being used by Caleb, it couldn't be seen as a mistake or coincidence. He was very familiar with such practices. Yeah, studying their tactics seems pretty upfront there. When Caleb started using the same tactics, which he had talked about during his YouTube live stream as cult tactics from Colty's study, I became even more concerned. At the June 2022 retreat, I was a facilitator. Okay, they're going to talk about the deep listening again, which we've heard of three times now. To be on the receiving end of this deep listening, it feels like you're being grilled. To have the other person staring at you nonstop, they'll put you on the spot. Uh, to keep talking further because the other member isn't saying anything. I wish that I'd gone to this event now because I really wish somebody could have had a camera on me as I outmogged these people. You cannot out eye contact me. You can't do it. I have never been broken in my life. Whatever autistic trait normally makes people averse to eye contact, I got the opposite of that. Um, it's it's the total just it, just I am not affected. I would have loved to have stared them down. The Bateman stare, yeah. Me as the uh, CPI USA people are asking about my dreams last night. Go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, ask if they have any dreams. Pract uh, practice doing a chance. People notice the chance would drag on to a point where it'd feel uncomfortable. Caleb Maupin also insists on having a grand entrance. Classical music playing in the background. He wanted the atmosphere to be very calm before he arrived. Then he wanted to make his entrance and jolt everyone. He made us all practice the grand entrance, psychoanalysis. 
It's very clear Caleb Maupin had ambitions to lead a cult and that he had been responsible for sexual misconduct against comrades, and then he went on to push them out and slander them, which is totally unacceptable. The word comrade isn't just a mere word. It has deep meaning and significance to us who use it. It means having a deep bond and loyalty to a person and the cause we believe in. It's a very heavy word which previous generations of revolutionaries all over the world have shed their blood for, and if we're serious about what we claim to believe in, we can't betray that standard. This is a bit LARPy, but I also kind of like it. I don't know. Nah, like, it is. It is. Don't get me wrong. But, like, that's something to... That's, that's a nice ideal to have, right? It's a cute ideal to have. Like, yeah, you know? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's LARPy, but it doesn't give me bad feelings. Someone who was Caleb's uh, friend and comrade for years had been the most consistent defender and ally. So it was not easy for me to write this statement, but I knew there was no other way. Um, yeah, okay. Mostly corroboration here. Sorry. This... Wow. Okay. <sighs> Joe Gale's statement. The first people I ever organized with was Caleb Maupin, along with many other like-minded comrades. The recent events have left me heartbroken and lost in my political life, the pain that he's caused others who trusted him, the alleged lies and manipulation, all things I never thought Caleb was capable of. I feel foolish and naive to have put so much trust in him, and so on. You understand. Don D's, aka Donnie D's, Donnie Didillo's statement. Donnie D in NYC is apparently their handle. Caleb Maupin was somebody I held in high regard. Uh, further corroboration. Uh, I'm speed reading this. We do already know all this stuff. I want to do analysis rather than read summaries. Going forward. Okay, this is new information. All of us who were brought together by the ideals we, must, we stand for must continue to fight for them. We must not allow charlatans who abuse our comrades to be in any position of leadership. If we are serious about what we claim to stand for, we cannot make excuses for this kind of behavior. This is not about unfair demonization or cancel culture. This is about preventing the kind of abuse from happening within our ranks and against our comrades. An organization so tainted by this kind of abuse and dishonesty cannot be repurposed. Even though it might seem like an easier option to simply continue CPI without Caleb Maupin leading it, it is not really possible to separate CPI as an org from the image of Caleb Maupin. Something new will come about which will not be tainted by this and which can be seen as a true vehicle for fighting for optimistic socialism and anti-imperialism. As far as what Caleb Maupin can do, the first thing he should do is own up to his abuses, admit that what we have laid out in this document is true, and not try to come up with ridiculous lies or slander us to tarnish our reputations or motivations for bringing this corruption to light. A prerequisite for Maupin is uh, to do what is right would be for him to own up to everything and not try to lie about those who expose this abuse. Caleb Maupin must not attempt to be in a leadership position or have authority over others, especially youth. There is stuff on him that is not in this document, man. I am telling you. this The whole youth thing has been alluded to too many times just, be, I, they, just because they can't get like some 16 year old to corroborate and like list everything in the document, man, there is stuff here. Maybe stuff they don't know for sure, but like, holy shit. At the end of the day, it's up to him as to which way this will go, but he should be, uh, it should be abundantly clear to anyone reading this that Caleb needs to get help for his issues. We also want to provide support to other members of CPI, and we know that you don't share any blame for Caleb Maupin's abuses. We must not let this crisis dishearten us. We should realize that by resolving the situation ourselves and not allowing it to be hostile political forces that brought this scandal to light, we avoided an even worse potential disaster. Whatever comes out of this crisis, we should have confidence that we will all continue to be comrades and work together to fight for what we know is true. And the rest is contact information. I have little time but much analysis to do, so let's get right to it. First of all, I consider this a gold standard of exposing abuse. Tr like, tremendous stuff right there. The full corroborations. It's lengthy. Um, it is thorough. You have the same story being retold by multiple people, which, while not enormously interesting the third time around, does a tremendous job of, like, making it very clear that there's a shared timeline. Yeah, this is a really, 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 really good call out. Um, like, like genuine, like, a lot upside with the best right here, you know? So yeah, in, in summary, I mean, yeah, with plenty of receipts. So in summary, Caleb Maupin is, uh, is a monster. I want to make it clear, by the way, a lot of the jokes that I make about Caleb Maupin are about superficial things like his voice. Obviously, the fact that he wants to be spanked by a daddy dom or whatever is very, very funny. Uh, his appearance, the fact that he looks like a beat. These things are funny to me. They are going to remain funny to me. But I want to make it clear. He could be the most charismatic, handsome, sexual giga chad in the world. And he would still be a monster. Uh, the lowest possible moral standard would be applied to him now and in that world. 
the the decision to make fun of him for superficial stuff is purely because it makes me laugh and presumably you guys too judging from the emote spams when i do um but it like morally speaking nothing gets him out of this we have effectively i mean let's be clear he pimped a desperate economically dependent woman then forced her to pay him and then she was no longer useful to him she lied about her he, he lied about her having an addiction to a bunch of others to kick her out of the org you have that he's studied from cults and tried to apply their tactics to his own group he's just a monster he has no political beliefs outside of his megalomaniacal desire to subjugate others for his personal gratification he he is a reminder that uh not every villain in uh in media has to have a sad backstory because sometimes people are just evil sometimes it really is that simple you know there are socioeconomic explanations that you can um that you can that you you can write out to try to like you know well what leads people to be that way and sure you know psychologists have been studying that but right now descriptively where we are there aren't like there aren't this isn't like a systemic you know there are things behind the scenes that can be addressed to fix this you can just say he's evil and that's fine it's okay to be that simplistic sometimes he has certainly earned it um with his behavior you know and i think caleb Moppin, i mean he, he's, a, he's he's special you know people have asked incredulously you really mean it when you say red fascist he's actually distinguished himself he's now far worse than your average fascist his ideology is already fascistic most fascists don't prostitute women and steal their money and have their followers eat out of dumpsters and try to run a cult that is actually an incredibly high standard for bad behavior right there it's he's he's it's phenomenal you know they they call us synthetic leftists and maybe he has a point he is putting theory into action he is showing us what praxis looks like he's not just a fascist he's going to live the life of the most evil person imaginable he is eventually going to crawl his way back into notoriety by the way but it's going to be difficult for him uh it will because even though a lot of the people who follow him uh are are themselves monstrous victims of abuse or not i'm not forgiving the ideology that they push these are people running around throwing up the uh russian z and supporting ukrainian soldiers getting killed i'm not i'm not exonerating any of the people who have been abused by him even if they've been led into that ideology there is a limit to uh you know there's there's a there's a there's a limit they're victims of the abuse but broadly you know to speak of this a lot of them still do have some sets of principles they're not all narcissists and megalomaniacs and i think it's going to be pretty difficult for caleb Moppin to build something off this keep in mind in one year in one year caleb Moppin just lost the syna he lost the cpi usa and he got dropped by rt I don't know what other sources of income he has outside sporadic journalism gigs for, uh, uh, you know, non-Western aligned media sources. And even then, this is some pretty big dirt being laid at his feet. He might be well and truly f And judging from the texts where he is threatening to leave his wife because he has what it takes to make it up in the world and she doesn't, I don't know how stable any of his social, uh, social faculties are going to be after this too. Cray cray. So good luck with that. He's certainly not going to have enough money to uh, uh, continue hiring his dominatrix. I can't imagine he's a particularly satisfying client to service. Um, yeah, so he might be f***ed, and I don't care. I just don't care if anything negative happens to him. Uh, he is genuinely one of the most morally repugnant people uh, that I have had the displeasure of knowing exists. Uh, sincerely, up there with the lines of like Stefan Molyneux, in terms of like being a Nazi is not enough, you know. Stefan Molyneux had to be the cult leader Nazi. It's like it's not enough for them to just make money pushing horrible politics. They internally, emotionally are driven by the misery of others. Uh, and that just, that really distinguishes people. That is really, really, really something far and beyond. We recently got like, to, for, cl for clarity, we recently got like exposés that were pretty ruinous for Nick Fuentes. And it was that he's a fake Catholic and that he's like, obviously gay and that he's like a weirdo anti-social like prissy queen behind the scenes you know that was that was his expose that was it it comes across rather minor in comparison doesn't it like genuinely 
No forcing uh, 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 economically deprived followers to eat out of garbage bins because you refuse to pay for their food because keeping them deprived makes them dependent on you. No separating people from their family so that they can be your prostitute spank daddies or whatever. That we know of. That we know of. He might, he might be doing all that, you know, that we know of. I'm only saying, you know, in terms of the info we have available to us, yeah. Wow. Truly, truly, truly horrible behavior. So I guess I want to say this both because I have to end stream like really, really soon. I want to say this to um, everyone watching for comedy and informative purposes. And on the off chance that there are people who are formerly a part of CPI who end up watching this, not entirely impossible considering the fact that I'm probably going to have the largest video in the subject. Um, and they might be curious about how it gets received by others as a kind of motion of solidarity. I want to be really, really clear, okay? What happened to you, all of this, is miserable shit, okay? Properly miserable. And I hope you understand there is a relationship between the ideology of the CPI and the way in which it was used as a cult. There's a connection there. I can't, I'm not going to spend like, you know, five hours on a whole debunk spree on whatever, but I strongly encourage you to be more critical of dogmatism and in-group, out-group tribalism, because those are the cognitive biases that make people vulnerable to cult recruitment and also make people vulnerable to authoritarian ideology, you know? I don't want to be preachy here. I'm not going to run all about this. Just take care of yourselves, seriously. I I'm, I'm very much of the opinion that the environment shapes the person, and I do believe that, you know, maybe when you're in a political group that is not uh, literally a cult, uh, you, you, you might develop a, a new understanding of, um, of, the, uh, yeah, of the world at large. And I hope you do, because, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. Wowza! How was that for a thing, huh? I didn't expect that ar I didn't expect that to go through like half as bad as it did. That was exponentially worse than I expected. Just uh truly extraordinarily unimaginably bad.